Well, hello and a very warm welcome. You've joined us live from Moore Gymnasium on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University in beautiful downtown Daytona Beach, Florida. It's the final non-conference home game of the 2022-2023 season for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats men's basketball team as they host the incarnate Word Cardinals. Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Michael Torello. Happy to have your company. Henson is once again with me up in the broadcast booth. Henson, you've been working on this game all day. Take it away. Yep. So, well, Incarnate Word likes to take it from beyond the arc, ranking top 100 in the nation in threes attempted per game. They aren't a great rebounding team margin-wise either, as though they're not awful at rebounding. Then stats for both offensive and defensive are respectable. They also allow a lot of rebounds for their opponents. Sky Wicks is their main man, scoring-wise, so if Cookman can stop him, look for the Cardinals to struggle. It's hard to gauge how good this UIW team is, as a 3-4 record is likely what you expect, beating up on D2 opponents and getting blown out by a top-25 team in Texas. But then close wins and losses against other teams with a losing record like Arkansas Pine Bluff and losing to a tough Tulsa team was 4-1. This team is also from all over the globe from Berlin to Brazil to Baltimore. So that's very interesting here in Moore Gymnasium tonight. Thanks, Henson. Well, Wildcats looking to get off a little bit of a skid. They lost three games up at the MTE at Longwood in Virginia. Lost to Lamar, 83-65. Delaware State, 72-64. And Longwood, 69-48. Last year, these teams played up in San Antonio, Texas with Incarnate Word winning 77 to 65. Now as we get ready for action tonight, let's send it down to the floor for your public address announcer, Harold Ford.
once again, thank you for joining us on this Friday evening from Daytona Beach. It's warmed up a little bit outside and inside. The Wildcats are looking to heat up from the floor, just shooting 42% from the field and 30% from three on this season. And as you mentioned, this Incarnate Word team is not shy about taking the deep shot. Yeah, they're, uh, they look to shoot and shoot often. They are not hesitant to pull up from three, especially their main man, Sky Wicks. 39 three-point attempts, only making 14 of them for a 35% average. But everybody on this team likes to shoot, and they will try it. Josiah Hammonds, 23 for 63 from behind the arc. Yeah, so man. look for those three-pointers. And you talked about Sky Wicks with the volume. He's got over 100 field goal attempts in the first seven games. So he is the volume shooter to watch out for. Here we are the number double zero for Incarnate Word. Also to note, Incarnate Word definitely has the overall size advantage tonight. Wicks, the lead guard, listed at 6'6". We've got Silva and Sabali at 6'8". Dennis at 6'7". Um, Sean Robinson at 6'9". Gabe Benny Till at 6'8". And Josh Opoa also at 6'8". It will be Marcus Glover, the center, who I don't have a listed height for, <laughs> to, uh, to tip off for Incarnate Word against the seven-footer Elijah Hulse for Bethune Cruckman. Wildcats in the all gold. They'll attack the basket to listen to listeners right in the first half. UIW in the black, trimmed in white and red. We are just about set to go from Coach Cy Court. Referees are ready. Teams are ready. The referees, unfortunately, are not ready. <laughs> Pump fake though. I, I'd give Glover a good 6'10", 6'9". definitely has the height advantage, but overall, this team is a taller team. And they came out in their warm-ups this evening, and their first maybe 10 minutes of warm-ups was all post. Pulse wins the tip. Zion Harmon tracks it. An immediate whistle as the clock didn't start on the beginning of the game. We're going to have a couple false starts. Hopefully that won't throw off either team's rhythm here to start the game out. But one interesting thing I'd like to point out is Damani McIntyre not coming out to start. I, you think one of our best on-ball defenders not playing, you know, against this Sky Wicks who's out here scoring, consistently getting uh, rebounds, assists. You'd want our best on-ball defender on him to start the game out, but it's interesting to see what Zion Harmon, who isn't no slouch either, or Hetty defensively. We'll here, do. here is Jacoby Hetty on the outside. He'll dump it to the short corner. Baseline drive out of bounds, Incarnate Word ball. And Incarnate Word looks to immediately get their bench and crowd going. They have some fans that made the trip from Texas to come down here and watch their Cardinals do battle with some Wildcats. So even during warm-ups, we saw them being loud and rowdy in more gymnasium. Yeah. So. We won't be surprised if we hear a lot of chirping from over there. Speaking of travel, Devontae Dennis's mother is in the building for Incarnate Word. Spoke to her before the game. Here is Elijah Davis out on top. Floats it to the corner for Wicks. He'll go to work underneath the basket and get the better of Reggie Ward. Now that's what you don't want to see. Immediately attacking the basket without little to no hesitation there and just has his way on Ward and just scores easily there. Wildcats on offense don't offer a much in off-ball movement. They are towards the bottom of the SWAC conference and assists per game. Ten to shoot. Thrown into the corner. Ward drives. Defender falls over. Ward falls over, and it's going to be a foul on Incarnate Word. Yeah. The defender didn't even, there was no real hesitation move out of Ward, though. I think he just slipped and fell there, but that blocking foul obviously is going to go the way Kirkman reset this shot clock, give him a little bit more time to work with. Floated up to Reggie Ward. The junior from Chicago. Hulse goes to work down low. Dumps it off. Harmon, clean paint. And the layup is good. Now, they heard you talking about poor off-ball movement and immediately you see Hulse posts up. Harmon sees the open space, cuts in, and just makes it, gets an easy bucket to make even the score back up. Now, the defensive side of the ball is going to be really important, especially against this guy, Sky Hicks. He's averaging 20 points per contest. 
as he's got Jacoby Hetty draped all over him, forces the turnover to Sean Dyson, coast to coast. No layup, but he will get fouled. And we talked about this in the women's game last week, Henson, about finishing easy chances on breakaways. Yeah. Uh, if you watched that last women's game, you saw a ton of missed opportunities out of the women's team. Though they did win that game, it could have been a much bigger margin of victory there if they simply made points from the free throw line and easy breakaway layups like we just saw. So hopefully this will not be a problem for the men's team here. He, Deshaun Dyson did force the foul. Another Chicago native, Deshaun. The reason we have so many Chicago natives on this team is assistant coach Billy Garrett from the Chicago area recruits there heavily. We've got Dyson from Chicago. Jacoby Hetty from Chicago, Reggie Ward from up there as well. Wildcats take a 3-2 lead as Dyson goes one of two from the line. Deshaun 10 of 18 from the charity stripe before tonight's contest. To the left wing it goes, here is Heyman. And a handoff for Morgan. Offensive foul, illegal screen. You got it, if you're gonna screen somebody, you have to set your feet. That's one of the first things you learn, especially if you're a bigger guy, you gotta set those feet or the refs are gonna call that every time. The two turnovers early for Incarnate Word, a team averaging 15 turnovers per contest. And this Cookman team looks to force turnovers, so uh, you'd wanna see that number higher if you're a Bethune Cookman fan. Halse backing down his defender goes for the sky hook. It's a little too strong, and it's gonna be a foul against Bethune Cookman on the catch and it's gonna go against Jose. And Jose had some problems in our, in our last home game against uh, Charleston Southern, I was there. And he had problems finishing those easy chances in and around the basket. So hopefully this won't be a problem throughout the season, but obviously something's going wrong a little bit in his uh, mechanics. Jose, 47% from the floor, which for your big guy in the middle is not really that great. They try a little pick and roll at the top of the arc. Gets Sky Wicks in motion. Here's a pop a shot three from the wing. It's good from Josiah Hammonds, another Chicago native. They're all over the place tonight. Five uh, to three Cardinals. Yeah, obviously, you see that pick and pop play with a good three point shot. As Step back, Hetty in and out. Offensive board, Reggie Ward, and he's tripped up. Another foul against the Cardinals. Yeah, just Deshaun Dyson took that step back there, trying to get some space, but didn't make it. But a foul on the Cardinals here, keep the ball rolling. Already three personal fouls on UIW in the first three minutes of action here. Two on Davis and one on Glover. Now Davis is probably going to have to sit soon if he isn't sitting already, which, which he, he is, is. He is on the bench. So two fouls is now. Harmon turns do. the corner, tough layup, hangs on the rim and falls for Zion. Beautiful shot for Harmon, but you don't want to have two personal fouls before five minutes even pass in the first half. And we saw that. Here's Sky Wicks for three. Two strong long rebound of the Rockets. We saw that in the women's game with uh, a couple of players for BCU. Harmon tries a three in kind, so this could be a very interesting battle between Wicks and Harmon. Another turnover by the Cardinals as they tried to go fast in transition. The game right now is very open. And Jacoby Hetty on the wing, sizes up Heyman, drives inside, spins and fires, and it's too strong. He had the space, he just couldn't make the basket there. It's a tough shot to go off your back foot like that, but Hetty usually has that in his locker, so. Hetty, second leading scorer on this team, 14 points a game. There's a missed shot from Incarnate Word. Still five apiece, working on four minutes and change into this contest. Harmon around the screen, floats it up for Hulse. And I think he made it a little bit too hard for yeah. himself trying to do the reverse layup. Tries to do a reverse layup. You're seven foot. Just put that ball up there. And then Incarnate Word will go to the line for the first time tonight. Josiah Hammonds, the junior from Chicago, transfer from Truman Community College in the Chicago area was we hit our first media timeout. Basketball season is in full swing. Come catch your Wildcats Saturday, December 9th for non-conference action as the women's team takes on Warner University at 2 p.m. Admission is free at Moore Gymnasium. Can't make it? Catch all the action live on youtube.com slash cat eye network. Five, five, five minutes in. Fives all around. Henson, what are your early thoughts? A lot of missed opportunities from both sides of the ball, from both teams rather. 
uh, three shots from Incarnate Word. They're already doing what we said they would, try to shoot a lot of threes and make a lot of uh, open ones, but only one for three. Hopefully they won't. If they keep that average up and at their volume, they might have a lot of points at the end of the game. Hosue continues to have issues up and around the basket there as we saw two semi-decent opportunities for him, and he just doesn't make them. But hopefully, you know, mechanics-wise, something gets fixed there, or he just, you know, it's something with the yips, some early season that hopefully will get cleared out by conference play. Bethune-Cookman won for their last six. They've already thrown up seven shots and forced three incarnate word turnovers. And I think be if you're going to be that inefficient from the floor, you've got to continue to force these turnovers and make these opportunities lopsided. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be in a losing situation if you don't get these percentages up. Right now, two for seven. That's 28% from the field. 0 for 1 from 3 and 1 for 2 from the free throw line. So, something's got to give there. This could be a close one down the stretch as it has been the last two times these teams met. Last year, you incarnate word 77-65 winners out in San Antonio. And then the first time these programs matched up was in 2019 when the Wildcats ran away in the second half to win 83-58. Of course, that was back before the... Uh, COVID interruption. First trip to the free throw line for the Cardinals and it's off the front of the rim and good for Josiah Hammonds. He's their leading free throw percentage maker. 90% 19 to 21. Now it'll be 20 to 22. Looking to make it 21 for 23 right here. And 90% is, as he makes that second free throw, is an amazing free throw percentage. That is if you, can't, you genuinely cannot get much better than 90% from the free throw line, realistically. Devontae Dennis checks in for Incarnate Word from Baltimore, Maryland. Harmon controls. Extra pass underneath to Kobe Hetty. Ball almost stripped. Out it goes to DJ Carter Hollinger playing his first home game of the season after missing the opening couple of games with an injury. Nice board down low by James Henderson, and then he throws the ball away to Devontae Dennis. He kicks the ball there, but. Underneath the basket it goes and scoring over the top is Marcus Glover. No correction, that's Sean Robinson, the 6'9 forward out of Chicago, the transfer from Austin P. Harmon pulls up and drains a free throw line jumper. He's got six of the Wildcats, seven points. Yeah. This game is very open to start out. Not very many set plays being run, but UIW might switch it up here. But everyone seems to just be shooting, missing, and then moving in transition. Another outside shot goes over the basket. Robinson 6-9 shooting the three, and that's just kind of the philosophy of head coach Shane Hyman. Yeah. Everybody on this team, uh, his first year here from Tulsa, but everybody on this team looks to shoot threes, and no one is scared to, to take that open shot. So interesting to see how Cookman's going to line up to try to deal with that, especially if they start making them. Deshaun Dyson at the wing. Coach Theus calling a play. Incarnate Word switches. Deshaun Dyson dancing, driving. Tough floater off the glass and in. Beats the height of the two dudes in the paint there. <laughs> Touches the backboard, but they still can't get to that ball. That's a tough shot. That shot kind of looked very similar to his buzzer-beating game winner against Alabama State last year, Dazon Dyson. Here's Wicks, a little bit of a step back, and then he's stripped by Dyson. Up the floor to Harmon, sets his feet, fires a triple, short. But James Henderson taps it back out to Dyson, and the Wildcats will have a second attempt at it. Yeah. But Hollinger's slow to get up from that fall there after getting that, pushing Hedy, that ball back out. step back. Money. Tough shot by Hetty. That little fadeaway jumper, his bread and butter. We've already seen him pull it out a couple times. Yeah. Hetty is what I would describe as a three level score, as the shot clock is incorrect. Um, Hetty from Wabash Valley College, a transfer, just a sophomore, but shooting 50% from the floor, 35% from three on decent volume as well. Yeah. yeah. Respectable scorer, that's the kind of guy you want on your team taking shots, and he does take it, and you'll be sure that he takes them. Sky Wicks out of the ball game. He goes yeah. to the bench. Yeah, he has not been his normal self here tonight. Yeah, it's, really. well, it's important for the Wildcats is that's a jump ball 
It'll be incarnate word on the alternating possession, but good defense by James yeah. Henderson. But it'll be important to win the, the minutes that Sky is not on the floor. Yeah, and more Jim really wanted that to be called a travel. He did go up and then come down with the ball, but the jump ball gets called and inbounds play ran by UIW. Wild three off the front of the rim comes straight back to Heyman. Yeah. Hammonds has a Michael Gid Kid Kilchrist like three point shot. If you know what I'm talking about, he kind of just threw that up there. Driving the lane and getting fouled is Josh Morgan, and he'll go to the line. There's a couple of gold jerseys in there. Let's see who the foul's on. It's on Jacoby Hetty. That'll be his first. Wildcats currently on a 6 0 run, lead at 11 9 with 13 minutes left to go in the first half. DJ seems to be a little, uh, I mean, he did come back from an injury recently, but since that fall earlier, he's been limping around whenever he doesn't have to move fast. So I'm looking for him to maybe get subbed out here soon, or at least hopefully it'll get worked out whatever's hurting him or bothering him. DJ Carter Hollinger, the former Big Sky freshman of the year while at Montana. Came a long way across the country to Bethune Cook from the mountains <laughs> down to below sea level here in Daytona Beach. Two free throws drained by Morgan. And it's a tied game at 11 all. Zion Harmon runs the offense. DJ hands to Hetty. He looked to pop that three from the top of the arc, but Good defense by the Cardinals. Yeah, didn't have enough space to let that fly. Working down low, going to the ground with a foul is DJ Carter Hollinger. Good catch and post right there. Yeah, good catch and post, but I'm worried. I'm If, you know, I'm Coach Diaz right now, I don't want to see DJ fall into the ground much more than he already has. You're coming back from an injury, you don't want to see your main guy, you one of your guys coming back. Just keep, you know, falling. That's when most injuries happen is those impact falls like that, so. Obviously, you'd be looking to him to stay on his feet more, if possible. DJ gets to the line a lot already. This is his 10th free throw attempt of the game of the season, and he's only played three games yeah. off the bench. It's, uh, tough players like that will often. Long on the second one out of bounds off of James Henderson. The more Jim crowd didn't like it. A, Pretty good more Jim crowd for a yeah. Friday evening. Friday evening, the week before finals week. I mean, and some students like me are already done with all their stuff, so they might be packing up. So maybe they want to see their Wildcats one last time before they hit the road. Well, if you're staying in town, the women's team has three more games this month at home. Starting on the 9th, that's next Saturday. That is a palming violation against TJ Ford Jr. That's the second time in two games we've seen a palming violation call. Yeah. We saw one in the women's game uh, a couple days ago. It's very interesting to see palming violations called at this semi-consistent rate. Well, and that must be one thing that the referees have put emphasis on this year. Every yeah. year the referees have something to put emphasis on or a rule change or something they're keeping an eye on more so than everything else. And I think that's indicative of maybe the, the, the referees yeah. committee has set that as a point of emphasis this year. General meeting. We need more palm and violations. Zion catch and shoot off to the left. The long arms of Henderson grab the board. Yeah, Henderson's been in the active in the paint this game. High up, Zion mismatch flies to the rim and gets fouled. Jeez. That is the kind of thing that you love to see from Zion. Just between the legs, jab step, find the space. And he was up there. If you were if you were looking at comparison to how tall like James Henderson and. Uh, that Robinson is for uh, UIW. He was about at their heads with his feet. So I mean, how when he fell, I was a bit concerned. But he got hops. He got <laughs> hops. But that is another t uh, personal foul for Carnal Word, who's already at five in this first half. Two for Glover and uh, two for Davis, and one for Morgan. You might see Glover come out of the game. Davis hasn't been in since picking up that second foul. That was only the third free throw missed by Zion Harmon of the season. Came in at 91% for the charity strike. Yeah. Might have to have a free throw off between him and uh, Salmon. Sky Wicks back in the game and knocks down a triple. Yeah. Maybe he, he is shooting 35% from beyond the arc. Yeah, maybe he just needed a little rest to figure out what he was doing. Fix his mechanics maybe with some. He messed up in practice warming up before the game, but comes back out and immediately makes a three. 
Zion looking for the roll of Henderson, finds him. James goes to work and misses the hook shot. Wicks in transition on the shorter Zion. Oh. Tries the Euro step and got the ball ripped out of his hand. Everybody's it's still jumping loose around. on the floor. It comes to Robinson and he lays it in. Oh, that's just unfortunate for Bethune yeah. Cookman. That was good hustle defense, but just too many moves trying to be made at once there. Henderson gets the ball, tries to get the ball from Zion, who gets that steal, but tries to get it out before he goes out of bounds to somebody. Ends up just giving it back, and then it's a little scramble, and UIW comes away with some points. Harmon against the much taller Robinson. Turnaround jumper, yes. Harmon all the way up to nine points in the first 10 minutes. Harmon has said, we haven't been talking about his scoring rate enough. Let me show him some. That's a reach against Dyson. And when you play this man style, looking for all these turnovers, and you're going to get called for reaches like that. We saw that with the women's team as well. Second media timeout. The Cats trail by 115-16. Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the newest BCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. I mentioned earlier on that this is the last non-conference home game of the season for Bethune-Cookman. They, they get a six-game road trip to close non-conference play. They'll go at South Carolina State next Saturday then at Purdue Fort Wayne, at Chicago State, at UCF, and finally at Mississippi State before coming back after the turn of the new year to take on Florida A&M to begin SWAC play. Yeah, before coming back to face those Rattlers, they're not going to be home for a minute during this winter break. South Carolina State, obviously, South Carolina, Purdue Fort Wayne, UCF is the, probably their closest game to home, but everywhere else is a good couple hours minimum from Daytona Beach. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they come back from that road trip, and especially what shape they're in. That really will set the tone for this season. They come back with, you know, maybe not a win against UCF, maybe not a win against that Mississippi State team who's tough in that SEC conference. But if they come back with wins against uh, South Carolina State and Chicago State, Purdue Fort Wayne, they'll be in a good spot before they play FAMU. Also, the most interesting game to me on that road swing is Chicago State because we hosted the Cougars at Moore Gymnasium last year, came away with the win, and we're going to try and uh, double up on Chicago State in the home back end of a home and home. That's in two weeks, that contest. We have a lot of Chicago kids, so they're probably looking back and forward to that away trip back home for them Yeah, in the city. Uh, Windy City, rather. Yeah, I almost called it the city of brotherly love. I that's got Philadelphia. Don't yep. You will make both people from Philadelphia and yep. Chicago mad. You don't want to do that. Yeah. Incarnate Word inbounding up by 110. 55 to go first half. The last two cities I want problems with is Philly and Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Robinson against no basket, that's a foul from a huge dunk by Sean Robinson. They're gonna call the reach in on Reggie Ward who just checked back in after being on the bench and good luck guarding the 6'9", 225 Robinson. That's a lot, that's a lot of work. Ward went back seemingly to the locker room to maybe check on something, maybe someone wasn't feeling right, but he's back in the game and immediately has to deal with uh, Robinson who's now been switched off onto Carter Hollinger. Wicks drives, that might puts be it up, foul. and one. Yeah. And that's the second foul in quick succession yeah. on Reggie Ward. Two fouls in about 30 seconds. No, they're going to call the foul on Harmon. Wow. Ah. So that's Zion's first personal foul. Ward already with two. His whole say is going to come in to replace him. Yeah. I don't know if I agree necessarily with that call. Obviously, it helps out. Cookman evens out the foul call numbers for everybody, but that did look like it was going to be on Ward. Yep. It sends Wicks to the line. Already at seven not points. The, not the best free throw shooter, just 61% from the charity stripe Sky Wicks. I guess if he has one weakness, that's it, but he completes the and one to give the Cardinals a four-point lead. It's going to be important for Bethune-Cookman not to allow Incarnate Word to go on a big scoring run and kind of pull away with this game at any point. you got to stay close. Right. Harmon, no-look pass to the corner. Dyson a triple, too short. Yeah, Jose and had a tough screen there. 
on Wicks to let that get that pass open enough for that no look, but just couldn't make that basket. Short corner here's Hyman and Damani McIntyre has checked into the game for the first time. The NCAA Division I leader in steals per game. Wicks bounces it off of Hulsey and out. Yeah. Hulsey plays tough defense there. Doesn't put him in, himself in a position to get, you know, allow a shooting foul or anything. Just plays good defense there and forces him to throw it off of him to keep possession. Heyman back to the top. Got the big DJ on him. Wicks spins by Dyson and then throws the ball away. Guess what? It's another steal for McIntyre. His 24th of the season. Zion goes by his defender, floats it up off the backboard and no good. That's a tough shot. That I mean, that's the look you want there. He has the space for that floater, just couldn't make it. Heyman drives past his defender yeah. and will get an offensive foul for an illegal screen on Sean Robinson. And if you were closely watching Damani McIntyre there, he kind of sees that his feet aren't set and kind of runs into him a little early before he can really set him and intentionally kind of looks like, oh, I'm getting pulled back there and gets that, forced that illegal screen call out of the ref. McIntyre is such a crafty player. Yeah. Love watching him play defense. Harmon off the screen, throws it up to Holsway. Finally gets that hook shot to fall. And you can tell what it means to the bench. All of them jumped up. Yeah. When you're in a uh, cold slump like that, everybody on the team is looking for you to get out of it. So they're all looking forward as McIntyre gets another steal. And then he loses the ball out of bounds. Uh, Sky Wicks poked it back away. Yeah. So give a steal both to Wicks and McIntyre. Wicks. Eight steals coming into the game. The team leader in steals is Elijah Davis, who picked up those two quick fouls and has not seen the floor since. Yeah. Uh, TJ, uh, D TJ Ford Jr. over there tried to get that, get into it with him, and <laughs> McIntyre was not having any of it. Basically shoves him off, but still loses possession. Well, if the name TJ Ford, who's got the ball now, he just handed it off, means anything to you, you might remember his dad, former McDonald's All-American and College Naismith Player of the Year in 2003 at Texas before an eight-year NBA career. Rebound off the front of the rim. Wicks gets a chance to set his feet, but he misses the triple. Nice rebound by DJ. Yeah. And speaking of NBA guys. Zion Harmon! Zion. <laughs> Does not want me to have my stories <laughs> and makes a beautiful layup finger roll there to put the tie the game up for the Wildcats. Zion put the team on his back early on. DJ fights through the screen. Josh Morgan on the ball now back to Ford. You were saying about the NBA? <laughs> yeah. Jaren, Ford pull up too yeah. strong. Jaron Jackson Jr.'s down. Oh. Open passing lane there, but just couldn't get it down there in time. But Jaron Jackson Jr.'s father is actually on this coaching staff for the UIW Cardinals. And one for UIW. Yeah. Jose is going to hack at Wicks and send him back to the line for yeah. another and one. Wicks, eight points. Harmon, 11 points. And it's really just going to be a battle between those two tonight. I think that's Josh Morgan, number 13, who just Oh, you're correct. There. Morgan yeah. at the line. Yeah, but I understand why we would. Wicks is that guy, so it's kind of you kind of mentally assuming sometimes that you're going to see him and his two big two zeros on the back at the free throw line for this hand one but Morgan of course the team leader in three point percentage but has not attempted a three yet tonight but Jaron Jackson Jr.'s dad on this UIW coaching staff you know all defensive player DPOY level defender so look for blocks in this game we don't have the Memphis Grizz Grizzly scores, so maybe not as many as you'd be looking for. DJ out to Harmon, six to shoot. He's way out there. Three to shoot, pulls up from the moon. Oh! oh! From the parking lot, down Beach Street, and around the corner, makes that deep three to tie the game back up at 22. More heroics for Zion to keep this game tied at 22. Handoff, Ford has to pass the ball, and McIntyre says, I'll have that in transition. Harmon throws it up. Oh, it's a rim-rocking jam for DJ Carter Hollinger. Timeout, incarnate word. We 
we've been looking for an alley-oop play all season here in Moore Gymnasium. And DJ Hollinger, on his first night back, says, hey, I missed you guys too, with the alley-oop jam there. Timeout incarnate word, 24-22 Bethune Cookman. They've scored the last five points. Yeah, going on a nice little run here is Bethune Cookman. Zion Harmon heroics, deep three alley oop. That's the kind of stuff that makes energy, especially to places like Moore Gymnasium, start bouncing when you make it. When you're making those kind of plays, especially in a close game like this, uh, the Cookman or Moore Gym faithful haven't seen a lot of close games in here. A lot of games get pulled away in that first half, and then get real, real not a, not as interesting as when, later in the game, but. Right now, they're getting a treat. Yeah, well, if you've never been to a game here, specifically a conference game, I, I've, I've heard people equate this gym to a mini Cameron Indoor up at Duke. The fans are right on top of you. It's four flat walls and a box flat roof. It's loud. It gets rocking in here when it's filled up. Tonight, full to the brim on the far side. The near side, not as full, but still a fair amount of people here for a uh, game right on the edge of finals week and we are happy to have their vo voices and support of the Wildcats yeah. here tonight. And we're happy to have you sitting at home or in the car, wherever you're watching this game, uh, whether you're here for UIW, you're Cardinal, if you're a Wildcat, you know, we're just happy to have you, even if you're a neutral and you're just watching basketball, real love of the game stuff <laughs> as we <laughs> go back in with seven minutes here in the first half. Elijah Davis says check back in. He has not played but two minutes. He picked up two fouls in those first two minutes and then has been out. One thing I've seen out of this UIW team on defense is that all of the defenders seem to slap the ground. That's I guess one of their maybe their trademark things, something that maybe Coach Herman's looking to bring in this energy stuff, but hasn't exactly been working. So maybe they'll switch it up. Good defense to force Davis back. He's got McIntyre on him. Wicks spins into a double team, lost the ball. McIntyre again with the takeaway. He's gonna go all the way to the hoop and lose the ball himself, but it's gonna go off of the Cardinals and it'll be Wildcat inbound. McIntyre is playing his heart out defensively, doing all he can to keep get, uh, get turnovers for his team. And just fast break opportunity, can't make the shot, but a good job. Forcing it, though. That's McIntyre's fourth steal of the night. It's the first half, and McIntyre didn't even start. He's only played five minutes. <laughs> Average near Dyson. steal a minute right now. To Holser, who backs yes. down his defender and travels, and I could see that from all yeah, the way up here. Every, yeah. Everyone in the arena started going and calling for that travel, even the fans here in Moore Gym. So, Especially when you're seven feet, you can't get away with that, man. Well, every step shakes the ground when you're seven feet tall. It's pretty easy for the refs to call that one. Nice little move into the corner. A triple is wow. rattled down by Josiah Hammonds from Chicago Powerhouse Curry High School. Yeah, two for eight uh, UIW is right now from beyond the arc, so obviously they're going to look to try to and a palming violation oh. against Harmon. So bo both teams get a palming violation. They really must have been in that referee meeting like, we haven't been calling enough. We gotta, <laughs> gotta raise the number or something. But uh, I haven't seen that many palming violations in my life before this season for both men's and women's basketball. So very interesting to see that rule shift. UIW up by one. Robinson swallowed up by Holstway, but a foul. And the... More Jim Faithful don't like that, neither does Hulse. That's his third foul. And you immediately see James Henderson get back up, go to replace him. Yeah, Hulse got in trouble, foul trouble uh, in our, one of our last games as well, I'm pretty sure. So something that he might need to work on is DJ's trying to talk to Theus well, before he gets in the line. I don't, I don't like that call because I think Elijah was in position. He was yeah. straight up. He had his feet set. You have, a, you have a guy go up, like, kind of up and under there. There's not much else Hulseway can do defensively without just letting him score. So it's very interesting to see that call. No, nah, I'd, I'd agree with you there. Maybe not the best call, but, hey, sometimes the calls are going to go your way. Sometimes they won't. So 
Robinson hits both free throws. Three point UIW lead, 5.55 to go first half. Yeah, Robinson's not a shabby free throw shooter either. Two, 20 for 24 coming into this game. James Henderson, turnaround jumper, doesn't go. Close shot for Henderson on that fadeaway, but just doesn't work out. Correction, that was DJ Carter Hollinger. Henderson not in the game, it's Jacoby Hetty at the four. Turnaround jumper, no good. McIntyre throws it ahead to Sean Dyson to the hoop with the layup. For a second, I thought Dyson was gonna try to put that thing down, but I think he thought of it, uh, second-guessed himself a little there, just goes for the finger roll, gets the points the easy way. Well, we know Dyson has the hops. He's yeah. thrown down some dunks this season already. Yeah. He was up by the rim. Heyman throws it into the paint, Hetty takes it away from Robinson. Dyson with speed. Euro step behind the head, no foul called. And it's gonna be a shooting foul. A little bit late on the whistle there yeah. from the referee, but we do go to the line. Yeah, McIntyre was open in that corner there, but you know, he, Dyson's gonna take that ball all the way down every time. And Hetty gets the shooting foul on, I guess, the second effort, even though he didn't have possession at the time of that first shot. Yep. Seneca Willoughby takes the floor for the first time. The sophomore from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the transfer from the junior college Contra Costa out in California. California, excuse me. <laughs> Every C in the book <laughs> for Seneca's. Well, they and they intro. and they played in the California Christian College Athletic Association. <laughs> <laughs> Love their C's out there in California. Seneca also from Philadelphia, so he would not have liked my, no. my misnomer of the <laughs> city of brotherly love being Chicago. But obviously, it's not true. Hetty makes the first. Despite Hetty being one of the volume scorers for this Wildcat team, only seven free throw attempts before tonight. This is eight and nine. He goes one of two. He only shot three of seven. That's 42%. Yeah, it's not good at all but i mean when you're a three level scorer like him you're gonna make your you're gonna get your points back other places but if he can add that free throw consistency oh that's wow. a ridiculous pull up he just by josh morgan with a hand in his face yeah. from way beyond the arc just pulls up in front of him does not care about the heady being in his face and just shoots that and drains it so seneca willoughby kind of an off ball facilitator type player he's got the ball now with the sleeves Corner three, no good. Offensive board, DJ Carter Hollinger. Jump ball, possession arrow favors Bethune Cookman. Yeah. Uh, Damani's gonna say that was a pass. It's <laughs> one of those kind of shots where it doesn't really go near any of the basket, but gets to your teammate, and all of a sudden it's no harm, no foul. McIntyre started three of four from three this season, but has dipped to now four for 12. Yeah. As he's in there for his defense, not necessarily his scoring prowess. It would be nice if he could add that to his game, though, but, you know, so you can't, some people won't have everything. It's just part of the game. Yeah, McIntyre, a senior this year, is along with Deshaun Dyson and Derek Carter Hollinger as the only seniors on this squad. So only three. Very young team here in Morgan. DJ, step back, step through. Nice shot. Yeah, double bounce right there. Just gets that nice, tough shot to go. 29-30. It's a very interesting game. It's never really felt like BCU or UIW has been really pulling away as... He slips to Davis and a little bit of afters between Willoughby and Davis. Willoughby thinking that should have been a travel. Yeah. As Theus comes onto the court, coaches for both UIW and Cookman come on to the court. As DJ hypes up the crowd. <laughs> That's right there, the student section. Basically the entire volleyball team is yeah. down there with the student section as everybody goes to the benches. And I think the referees may want to go to the monitors and check this yeah. for foul play. I mean, Davis kind of looked like he just slipped. He's been slipping a little bit all game. If you've been paying attention, I don't know if his shoes, something wrong with his shoes or what. Everybody else seems to be fine, so it's not a slippery court issue. But, you know, obviously we don't, you don't wish there's any foul playing that possession, even if you're a fan of uh, UIW, just because, you know, you don't want all these afters. And, you know, we're all for competitiveness, but you don't want things to get bad and ugly in here, so... And Zion Harmon's going to pick up his second personal foul. Yeah. 
That's not. And the Cardinals are in the double bonus, so they'll go to the line to shoot yeah. two after this review. Make sure you are representing Bethune-Cookman University Athletics to the fullest. Buy the latest BCU gear online at the Bethune-Cookman online store. Go to bcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest BCU clothing and apparel. That's bcuathletics.com and click on shop. Now, Henson, we don't have a monitor here. We, we won't be able to see what the referees are looking at, but in real time, it just looked like Davis slipped. Maybe yeah. Harmon caught him on the way down and they called the foul. I, I, I yeah. don't think there needs to be anything else. Yeah, nothing, no text, nothing really given out. You know, it was just some John between two. Both players were John back and forth. So, I mean, worst case, you tech both of them and keep it pushing. But obviously, from where we're sitting in the corner, we didn't see anything really <laughs> bad. But foul trouble for both teams, really as both uh, Holsway and Ward have three fouls for uh, Bethune-Cookman and Incarnate Ward has uh, Glover and Davis both have two fouls already. Wicks has five turnovers, something I want to point out, for eight, with eight points. So usage-wise, that's not a really good stat line for him as you see Davis head to the line here. Yeah, nothing else was called, no technical, no flagrant. Yeah. So it'll just be two shots for Elijah Davis who only has eight free throw attempts on the year and th shoots 37.5%. But I guess I reverse jinxed him as he makes the first one. Yeah. And more Jim looks to get loud for these free throws. And you mentioned, Henson, that neither team has really felt like they've had much of a rhythm in this game. And I think that plays into BCU's favor. You don't want UIW to get into a scoring rhythm and, and just kind of put multiple possessions together. Davis taps it all the way out and he'll go out of bounds. And he runs right in front of the <laughs> student section and he hears it from the lot of them. Yeah. Media timeout, final one of the first half. Stay up to date with everything with Cookman Athletics by checking out the Wildcats on social media. Give BCU Athletics a like on Facebook and follow the Wildcats on Twitter and Instagram at BCU underscore athletics for the latest on BCU men's basketball follow at BCU hoops on Twitter and Instagram you don't want to miss our Cata Network crew with uh, Gino Robinson executive director putting out all this great content behind the scenes I've watched him make graphics before he's a wizard at what he does makes you really it may, it's one of those things where you watch him you're like dang I, I could do that technically in theory <laughs> Very impressive stuff we got here going at Bethune Cooking University. Now, I want to pull back a little bit, and I'm sure we'll talk more about this in the second half, but man, oh man, the women's team are off to a hot start. A four game winning streak in conference play. They swept the Atlanta Thanksgiving tournament. They got a big win over Jacksonville, and tomorrow, they, oh, excuse me, on uh, Monday, they head down south to South Florida to take on FIU, a win that would maybe be their biggest win of the season. Yeah. I mean, the women's team has shown up and shown out this season to start it off. I mean, I'm thinking they're going to have a good chance to do something in that SWAC tournament later in the year if they keep playing how they're playing. And this is without some of their you know, key players being at 100%. So if they keep it up and those players get back in their rhythm, we're going to see a really tough Cookman team in more gymnasium for the women's side. And we haven't really seen that since 2019. Of course, the women back in 2018 made the SWAC tournament for the very first time, won the MEAC. And then, of course, all that momentum was halted by COVID and athletics kind of shutting down here for an entire calendar year. You know, new coaches, new players all across the board. And now year three under Janelle Creighton, she's really got that program humming like a well-oiled machine. Wildcats on the ball, down by two. 342 to go in the first half. Dyson fakes the three, drives off balance shot and rattles down. That's a tough floater. The pass from DJ should not go unnoticed though. He just kind of throws it like a quarterback from the low post there to get it to uh, Dyson. Tie game, another, another turnover. Another steal from McIntyre. Dyson there. in transition, oh. Henny slips. But he does get the ball to Ward. Backdoor pass, wow. Hollinger gets clobbered as he goes to the net. I'm, DJ has gotten a fouled hard at least three times to start this game out. And I'll tell you what, 
the player that made that play, yes, Jacoby Hetty for holding on to the ball as he fell over, but Seneca Willoughby, what a pass. Yeah, you, got, you have to have eyes in the back of your head to be immediately seeing that cut and run in there from DJ. But Damani McIntyre, I think, is going to be given that steal. Yeah, he is. So he's at five steals in eight minutes here. That's ridiculous. It's an absurd clip. Well, the Wildcats currently first as a team in NCAA Division I at steals per game at 14. And second in total, only FIU has more. They've got 13 more steals, but they've played two more games. Yeah. So at the rate that Cookman's going, we're going to see a lot of steals out of this Cookman team. And obviously, you're going to be looking for fast break points from these players as you know the grounds crew here looks to make sure the floor isn't as slippery because we've had a couple players slipping and falling around you know it's getting colder outside and stuff condensation you know it's the last thing you want so something that they're going to probably have to be keep checking in on as this game progresses Carter hollinger hits the first one and i think everybody here in more gym would have uh would have been excited to see him slam that down but uh, go to the line for two after a hard foul by Armani Drummond, who exits the game. You have to, as a, as a basketball player, you do sort of have to respect a player going up and contesting that dunk opportunity. Certain guys would have seen, oh, wow. Another slip Another for the slip. player. That yeah. was McIntyre. Yeah, both teams having problems with the uh, floors. Now, if this was football or soccer, I'd say, well, you got to go put longer spikes on at halftime. But yeah. this is... This is basketball, you can't really do that. Willoughby trying to save the ball, and he does. Hollinger in transition. Dyson goes right at Wicks, backs up into a three. Oh, oh, just a little short, but he gets his own rebound. Into the corner, Willoughby a triple, too strong. Too good. And I, and I think if you're Bethune Cookman there, you've got to slow down yeah. and use the clock and try and find better opportunities. Yeah, you're up right now with a couple minutes remaining as UIW misses their three, gets that board. Wicks under the basket. Oh. It's going to be a jump ball, I think, as Willoughby and Jacoby Hetty were wrestling on the baseline. That was a tough possession for him. And if you, I mean, you're not going to see it at home, but Re Theus was yelling at that ground, you know, the grounds crew to start cleaning up the sweat and water on the court. Oh, they're going to get Dyson for a foul before the ball was even thrown in so two free shots for UIW coming up and that's Dyson's second yeah. and now Willoughby gets back up so we're going to likely see Dyson come out of this game after this free throw here that's tough you never you never want to foul before the ball is even in play yeah. and give a team like UIW who's 90% from the free throw line had more chances to score. Yeah. Cookman only 60%, but both teams have shot 10 currently before this one for UIW, so not super high amount of free throws yet, but as this game ties up, 33-33 with two, around 225 left, you know, Cookman's gonna look to try to maybe slow down play here a little bit, run some plays, get some two-on-one situations going later in the game. Harmon. Slips the screen back oh, door. Wow. DJ misses the turnaround jumper. And if you're DJ, I think you've got to muscle through and try and get that one to the rim. Yeah. He already had the guy in the air. So you go, all you, usually you'd see guys go up and under and force that personal foul. Kick out. Heyman wide open. Yeah. Bang. You can't leave this UIW team open for three because they will take it. And now all of a sudden, Cookman's down three with a minute 40 left. Harmon floating it again. DJ gets it blocked. It comes right to Willoughby and one off the volleyball style putback. Another one of those I definitely meant to pass that ball to my teammate kind of plays. DJ goes up, gets him jumping again, but gets absolutely gets rejected by the UIW player there. But the ball just ends up in Willoughby's hands and he just puts it right on back and has the opportunity to tie this game up with 140 left. Great job by Seneca, misses the and one opportunity and then it's out of bounds off of McIntyre's knees. He was trying for another takeaway. Yeah. But Bethune Cookman just one of their last five from the floor. And UIW has hit three of their last four three-pointers. But really, 
91.7% from the free throw line, 11 of 12. That's the big difference in the game right now. Yeah, that's what's key. That's what's really making this game, uh, giving the UIW team the lead and really keeping them close in this game. Every time they get fouled, they just get those automatic points and put more pressure on that between Cookman offense. Up and under blocked. And then Jacoby Hetty's out ahead of the defense. Uh, he can't get it to go. Now, to be fair to Jacoby, that was a tough finish. Yeah, that ball was a little bit too much, had a little bit too much mustard on it. And he tries to get that ball up before he goes out of bounds or gets blocked, but barely misses. And then Willoughby's going to be called for a reach and two more free throws for UIW. It's the last thing you want to see if you're Theus or any Wildcat supporters out there. He's letting this team go back to the line. They've been consistent from here. And it's Morgan again, who's five of five. Half of his points from the free throw line. Yeah, it's one of those where it's like, you don't want to you don't want to keep sending them here and try to prove a point when they're obviously doing good from here. And the commentator's curse didn't even work on him yeah, as yeah. he drains that first free throw. Wicks comes back in for the last 111 of the first half. And for the Wildcats, it's important to stay within touching distance and have a chance at the end of this game. Yeah. Because UIW is going to score. They score almost 80 points per game. It's good, but it's a lane violation on UIW. So it's still a three-point game. Yeah. That's a blessing there for the Cookman offense, keeping it within three, and all of a sudden, if you get a good three-point opportunity it's a tie game possibly heading into halftime if you get it up quick a two-on-one where you could possibly take the lead which double is what Harmon looks to do oh ho, ho, Zion double step back James Harden style oh my goodness Zion Harmon have a day already 16 points and he only averages 14 a game yeah just a lot of score. Oh, oh. McIntyre forces the turnover. It's not a steal, but he did force Dennis to step on the baseline. And now timeout BCU. Yeah, timeout BCU. Definitely going to drop a play here. Only 30 seconds of game clock here with 40 seconds uh, on the clock. So uh, look for a two on one opportunity. Look for something quick and fast, hopefully, to get some points. And then Cookman will look to get the ball back with some time on the clock for another scoring opportunity. Well, the start of the offense for Bethune-Cookman has usually been pick and roll with the five, roll the five into the paint, and either look for him downstairs or look to pass it to another wing player. And that's where the offense has really started for Bethune-Cookman. And of course, Zion doing Zion things, 19 points, eight of 12 shooting, two of five from three. But uh, you gotta credit the other players. DJ Carter Hollinger with seven, Deshaun Dyson with five. They're doing their part. Yeah. Everybody's kind of chipping in, even Hetty with three, who's somebody you look to have probably around, I'd say, 10, 12 points towards the end of this game at minimum. And then uh, Dyson, who was a scorer with him in loads against Charleston Southern, is going to probably look to warm up with these two fouls. But Ward with three, Jose with three. One thing you don't want to see, especially with a team that has dominant bigs and a tall presence is foul, getting uh, your big guys fouled out early. Holsaway already has uh, with three, and Ward with three has already said. You don't want to end up having to play small ball against a team that will definitely look to take advantage of that. Wildcat ball, tie game at 38, 40 seconds to go first half. Harmon already with 16 points. Seneca Willoughby looks to run the offense. He finds DJ down low, and Carter Hollinger gets the roll. Just a little bit too much time to get off the clock for a two-on-one opportunity. So looking for UIW to hold this ball for the last shot. And in that case, look for more Jim to get loud. 15 on the clock. Harmon backing Morgan up. Robinson out on the perimeter. The 6-9 up against DJ. He takes a long two and knocks it down. And that's it. The Wildcats lead at the break by two, 40 to 38 after a back and forth first half. Yeah. Crazy stuff on both ends of the floor. No, it's correction, it's a tie game. 44. 40 to 40 as that uh, last bucket didn't register on the scoreboard until just now. Uh, Hanson, break this one down for us. Yeah, so Bethune Cookman and UIW have been playing this game close the entire time. 40-40 is 
a deserving score for both teams. No one really has taken control of this game, taken the game by the scuff of the neck. There have been runs for both teams, but the problem is every time Bethune Cookman gets on a run, they just foul on the other end, giving uh, UIW some free scoring opportunities, which keeps the game close and doesn't allow them to pull away. And credit to the Cardinals, they have been lights out from the free throw line. 13 of 14, 92% as a team at the free throw line with Morgan going seven for seven. The only miss is from Davis, who only has one point currently. But Bethune Cookman needs to do a better job of making their three-point opportunities matter. Two for nine, 22% right now. 16 of 34 from 47% from the field overall. Zion Harmon is the offense currently. 19 points, nine for DJ. But obviously what you're looking for is just more consistency in on those fast break opportunities that McIntyre and Hetty and all, all this defensive presence is creating 11 total steals for the Wildcats heading into halftime. Wildcats average 14 steals a game. They will probably break that number if this keeps up in the second half. We'll take about a 10 minute break. And when we come back, it's half number two. Once again, it's the Wildcats 40. It's the Cardinals 40. A great second half between two teams that are looking to break their season average and points scored tonight. They're already both halfway there. We'll see you for the second half right here on the Cat Eye Network.
Welcome back to more gymnasium for the second half of this evening's contest featuring the Incarnate Word Cardinals and the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. It's a close game, 40 apiece yep. after half number one. My name is Michael Torello. Thanks for keeping it with us here on a Friday night. Henson White joins me on commentary. Let's run you through a couple of stats from the first half. UIW out rebounded Bethune Cookman 17 to 15, but Bethune Cookman got the offensive glass seven to five, and that includes nine second chance points for the Wildcats. So remember, we criticized the women's basketball team here at BCU last week for not capitalizing on their offensive rebounds and the second chance points. Wildcats doing that well. UIW has turned the ball over 14 times, 11 of those Wildcat steals, six of those from Damani McIntyre in just 11 minutes of floor time. He continues to be dominant. Although, I was talking to a statistician in SID, Bryce, downstairs. He only has these kind of steals numbers at home. It's one, two, zero on the road. At home, he shows out. And also, something Bryce told me is that every time Damani gets a steal, he looks right at him and points to the computer and says, did I give me that one too? Did I get that one? <laughs> he's always he's making sure his stats aren't counted. And that's important when you think, when you Think about all the tape that uh, next level professional leagues and stuff have to look through. Yeah. Sometimes they're just going to look at the stats and they see a guy who has all of these steals defensively. You're going to be like, well, we got to go sign him up. So it's important. Those ones and zeros matter at that next level. Yeah. Despite talking at the beginning of the game like we were going to struggle with the height of Incarnate Word, we are outscoring them in the paint 20 to 10, but are being outscored from three, five to two. Yeah. That's 15 to 6 for my multiplication tables. Yep. Correct, both both three-pointers for Bethune Cookman scored by Zion Harmon, and both of them have been ridiculous. Yeah. One was the one from the side court logo on the near side, and one was the Harden-esque double step back on the far side. Certainly feeling himself here tonight. Uh, 19 points to assist, tied for most on the team and assist, most points by a little bit in a minute. And... We're going to look for him to keep dominating here in the second half, especially if Cookman looks to, uh, you know, win this game and put it away. Hopefully other players on the team that haven't been as off successfully offensively as we're used to, Deshaun Dyson and uh, Jacob Heedy being the main two guys that you'd look at and point at and be like, hey, we're going to need a little bit more production out of you. Harmon's doing his job, but needs a little bit more help around him. And on the other side, Incarnate Word's very even in their scoring. Uh, Morgan is 12, but three players on eight points, Wicks, Hammonds, and Morg, uh, Robinson all have eight points. And then the next uh, close score is Heyman and Davis. So much more even scoring output from the Cardinals. As the we important get stat, though, is 13 of 14 from the free throw yeah. line for Incarnate Word in that first half. And the Wildcats did rack up the fouls with both Elijah Holsey and Reggie Ward, so their top two front court players, both at three fouls, and they're both in the game right now. Corner pocket, no, for Josiah Hammonds to start the second half for Incarnate Word. Here is the aforementioned Zion Harmon, 19 points, two assists. Jacoby Hetty goes to work against Davis, and back to Harmon with 15 to shoot. Halsey and Ward set the double block. Dyson with seven to shoot, drives, floats it off the glass, and he'll go to the line. Well worked play there by BCU. Yep. Uh, that first half didn't have much well work, you know, in terms of well worked plays. Now they were well worked scoring opportunities, but in terms of set design plays, we didn't see much of that. Very fast and loose for both teams offensively. So it's going to be interesting to see if we're going to see a more uh, thoughtful approach offensively out of Cookman. And when the Wildcats did go to a set play, it was usually a pick and roll, and they either slipped a pass to the big man cutting to the basket or looked to shoot off of it. Yeah. And it was very it was very simple, just one action, not multiple actions rolling into each other. Dyson hits both, and it's a 42-40 lead for the Wildcats. Here's Davis, picked up two fouls early in the first half, and didn't see much floor time. And then he throws the ball away, looking for Robinson on the backdoor cut. Yeah, that certainly is going to help you get more floor time. Those kind of mistakes are very costly, especially against a team like Bethune Cookman. And you see Marcus Glover already set the check in. That'll probably be for Davis. Yeah. One thing that's interesting to see is that Wicks is not in the game to start the second half out. Well, maybe he's tired or something. 
but you know he played 16 minutes in that first half so it's very interesting yeah. to see wicks a man averaging 20 points a game only eight right now and also as you said not in the game ward kick out heady open for three short but an offensive rebound for Harmon, the shortest guy on the floor, who oh skips through God. and finishes the second chance opportunity. 21 points already for Zion Harmon. Kind of the main difference between the teams right now is that we have a Zion Harmon and they and don't. We're going to get a hand check foul on Reggie Ward. That's his fourth already yeah. with 18 minutes left to go. So we're definitely going to have to rely on DJ Carter Hollinger and James Henderson to play that four and five spot yeah. down the stretch. Reggie Ward already has four fouls and has only played four minutes of basketball. That's a foul a minute. That is not good at all. Especially for a guy in Reggie Ward who you've kind of relied on on the offensive end. He, he's shooting 62 percent from the floor and has 11.9 points per game but obviously with all those fouls has not been a factor tonight yeah. davis off the handoff drives and can't finish the tough shot at the rim a crowd of arms battle for the rebound it eventually comes back to davis he misses again wholesale so gets that rebound there zion in transition nice oh, back wow. to a cutting pass Skip pass to DJ for the lay. Basically, makes it look like he's going to dribble it out a little bit. Just bounces it in place for DJ to cut in on that. Left hand drive back out, Davis. Elijah Davis from Severn, Maryland, outside of Baltimore at Powerhouse St. Francis Academy is where he played his prep ball. Here's Sky Wicks back in the game and has a shot blocked by Jose, oh. but on the second chance, Jose will pick up his fourth foul. So both of our front court players have four. Yep, that's the last thing you want to see is a, a, against the team who's running a small ball lineup right now. We know they have a lot of height on that bench sitting, but I, swear, I mean, Jose makes everyone look kind of small, so that's not fair. But you won't want to see your two main front court players get four fouls together. I mean, it's bad enough to have already one of them, but both of them means that you're going to have to rotate to both of your backup guys. Who aren't, who, DJ has not been playing bad, and neither really has Henderson, but obviously they're not starting for a reason. So Henderson has only played five minutes, but crucially, neither DJ nor James Henderson have a foul. Yeah. So they can play a little bit tougher on the defensive end as Sky hits both and stops a 6-0 BCU scoring run. But the Wildcats have to continue to knock down their shots and get good looks at the rim because surprisingly that's where they've scored the most points tonight. 24 points in the paint. Henderson allowed to dribble the ball and back down his defender. Hand off Zion. He goes to the paint oh, through a traffic and jump ball, BCU ball. And that's a little bit tough on UIW because Josh Morgan thought he got a clean block there. Yeah. Kind of looked like for a second I thought that was going to maybe be a traveling call. Harmon couldn't get the ball out. But jump ball called, and now a set play likely being ran here. It gets it to Dyson on the corner. Dyson floats it down to Henderson. Almost had that one poked away by Hammonds. Deshaun, step back, triple. Back iron, no good. Henderson oh. skies for the board. Him and Hetty collide. It's going to be a foul on UIW. It's going to go against Josiah Hammonds. That'll be his fourth foul. So we got, we got four fouls all over the place. Yeah, a lot of... <laughs> A lot of tough basketball being played as uh, Hetty's a little slow to yeah, get up. He, he, Hetty landed flat on his back, and eventually his teammates pick him up. But yeah. Jacoby, a really important piece for this team at 6'6", six, six, can play positions basically one through four, yeah. and has been scoring 14.1 points per game, although only three points tonight on one of five shootings. Yeah. Not, not a banner night for number zero. Yeah, Hetty got a, Hetty and Henderson go up for that one, and Hetty kind of lands awkwardly as Dyson looks to get that pick and pop. But Hedy. he's already back to getting. Oh, uh, Hetty almost got that rebound, but threw it away, looking for Henderson underneath. Transition triple, no good. Offensive board for Glover. Glover looking for Heyman and turns the ball over. Wildcats now in transition. A lob oh, up to Hetty, and he's and gonna go foul. to the line. <laughs> they were looking for the rim rocker for Almost Jacoby Hetty. Another alley you play, getting the crowd back into it. For some reason, Sky Wicks is surprised that he's called for a foul there, even though he kind of wrapped around his uh, Hetty's midsection while he was well, midair. At, at that point, you either foul to give up the two points, yeah. and Jacoby Hetty not the best from the free throw line, so I, I think 
If you're playing pure percentages, yeah. if you're UIW, it's better to foul them. I was watching uh, an NBA game the other day, and I can't remember who it was. It was somebody on uh, a career player. He's on Denver now. He was on the Clippers Not for a long Drummond. time. Was it? Uh, it was Andre Drummond. Uh, no, oh, uh, DeAndre Jordan. Oh, yeah, DeAndre Jordan. Yeah. Right, and... And his free throw percentage is below 50% for his career. So instead of letting him lay the ball up, uh, San Antonio was just fouling him. As that ball goes over the backboard, it'll be BCU ball. Yep. So it's not a bad strategy if you can get teams to miss free throws. Yeah. Zion Harmon takes it up the court. And one of the quirky things about more gymnasium is those little... Uh, oh, Zion, oh. stop it! <laughs> One of the little quirky things about Zion Harmon is that he knows how to put the ball in the basket as he makes that tough shot. <laughs> and David, <laughs> Davis and Hetty chirping at each other. Davis thought he, or excuse me, Hetty got, thought he got fouled. Yeah. Hetty with a dramatic kind of step back after making contact on Davis. At ball the top whips of the key. around to Heyman. One of the quirky things about Moore is that you have those little bars above the basket. That and are, that's going to be an and one for Marcus Glover. Uh, Henderson tries to rip it out while he's going out for that dunk, but can't make it. But those little bars above the basket are technically out of bounds. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you get a big carom off the rim, it might it might not technically go over the backboard, but it'll be out of place because it hits that bar. Yeah. But not in uh, volleyball. So when if you can see, I'm not 100% sure if you can see the roofing of more gymnasium, but it's kind of like a little puzzle up here. So we've seen plenty of volleyball plays hit off of the corners and stuff. It's very fun to watch volleyball here in Moore Gymnasium as Glover misses that free throw. Glover, the sophomore combo forward center from Chicago. Hetty. Oh, my. Step back, Jacoby Hetty. Ah. Too strong. And I, I think Jacoby got to realize maybe it's not his night right now and yeah. try and pass that ball up out of an iso play because Incarnate Word can get back to within one possession here. Glover, tough finish, short. And DJ grabs the board. Sort of a heat check for Hetty to make sure that he's tapped out of bounds by Wicks. Trying to see, I guess, if he has it today, but obviously not. Tonight has not, you know, been his night. Shooting around, uh, uh, currently one for four, one for two from free uh, from the free throw line. Only three points this game in 15 minutes. Two steals, though. He's been a defensive presence, but offensively, he's just not been his night. Both teams a little cold to start the second half. Bethune Cookman, one of their last four. UIW, one of their last eight from the field, as it is 50 to 44. Basketball season is here, and season tickets are on sale now at the VCU box office for just $225 on the lower level and $125 on the upper level. Wildcat Basketball wants to see you this season at more gymnasium with, with performances like we've seen from Harmon and DJ Carter Hollinger tonight. Why wouldn't you want to come out and support your Wildcats? Yeah, they're playing. I mean, you can't beat those prices. I doubt I can bet darn near bet money on the fact that most other universities that have season tickets are professional leagues that have season tickets you're not going to really beat these prices so i would recommend you coming out here if you really want to be out here and watch the basketball with some amazing fans up here in more gymnasium you know and then once we get at a conference play we'll get the pep band yep, pep in here band. after marching season is over and keep them the gym real we really be rocking really it'll get real loud in here with the pep band and everything if you haven't had the chance to see our marching wildcats you're missing out on the treat uh, I know there's some UIW fans and folks who are watching. Yeah, it's, it marches a little bit different here with some HBCUs and stuff. You don't, it, it's it's different. It means more down here. It's sort of SEC-like with the bands. Yeah, well, and, and really, the I'm so glad that I don't have a big, long halftime show in uh, in football so I can just kind of sit back and watch the bands, especially at the Florida Classic. It was, it was a fantastic time. Sean Dyson almost took that step back three, thought better of it. Now he'll drive at Heyman and miss on the floater. Yeah. Tough shot for Dyson. Had that little space from that step back, didn't want to take it. Tries to drive, doesn't make that shot. Sometimes it'll just happen. It's one of those kind of nothing possessions. Morgan caught under the basket. Davis is open for a drive. Kick back to Morgan. He's open for three. Wow. Nice closeout by Good. DJ. DJ's entire arm basically within that area, of that shot getting up. Dyson, catch and shoot, ah. Ah, and it's just not been good for the Wildcats from beyond the arc. Two of 13, yeah. and 
If you're BCU, oh, look Ooh. out. Marcus Glover cleared for takeoff. Yeah, Marcus Glover <laughs> was a bit annoyed and tired of the Thune Cookman slaps the <laughs> slaps the floor a little hard. I feel like that's got to hurt your hands, but, you know, it's Harman one of those drives things. Past Davis. Oh, my and God. One. He got the reach in on Davis as well. <laughs> Zion up to 25. Have yourself a day, Zion Harmon. I did. I <laughs> exclaimed at that shot because at first I thought he was just putting that up because he got fouled and he still makes it there. Take makes it an and one situation here as uh, Dema uh, Demonic checks back into the game alongside DJ. We have DJ. Breno Silva in from Incarnate Word, the native of Brazil and played at the NBA Academy Latin America in Mexico. And his father, a former Brazilian national team and professional player down in Brazil. Very, it's very cool to see have teams come to more gym with international players. Always very interested to see, hear their stories and learn more about them and how people, you know, sports can really change lives and uh, help them out of tough situations or just do something that, you know, means more to a lot of people. Morgan kicks to Wicks. Good defense by Dyson, forces him to back up 10 on the shot clock. Whistle and a stoppage of play. Yeah. Not um, sure why there was Morgan a whistle. Morgan seemed to have gotten, I think, maybe brushed across his eye there to, by one of our defenders and kind of took himself out of the play on purpose, but the ref calls a stoppage for that. I mean, They didn't I, call a foul. At least none have yeah. been entered in the scorebook. Yeah, I think it was just a stoppage for him. And now the ref is talking to... Jacoby Hetty, yeah. You know. Jacoby Hetty, no, but he seems more so to be talking to Breno Silva because I don't know what Jacoby Hetty's been saying to him, but when he walked over, he made a point to make sure Silva heard whatever he had to say. There's Long another skip open pass, three. three from Morgan, and he shoots it better than anybody else on the team, 40%. Yeah. Eventually, those, start, those open shots are going to start going down, so... You got to start closing down defensively if you want to consistently stop him from making them. Dyson drives against Silva, gets oh, him in the air. Bank wow. shot off the top of the glass. Every All of our guard play has been outstanding here to start the season, especially in more gymnasium. We've seen Harmon and Dyson rack up points, at, points after points down here. So it's fun to see him do it again. Wicks. Goes to the hoop, oh. and a foul will be called as it's going to be on Dyson for the reach-in. So uh, DJ got the projection, but he, yeah. didn't, he didn't give it the foul. Nah. His play was clean. It's going to be the third on Dyson. Yeah, just a tough tough shot attempt for uh, Sky Wiggs, who's been taken out of the game. And as I said when we started this game, if Cookman takes him out of this game, Look for Incarnate Word to struggle. And outside of a decent performance out of Morgan, Wix only has 10 points. And outside of Hammonds with eight, no one else is really helping out offensively. So if they keep Wix quiet like they mostly have, considering his scoring clip usually is in the 20s, I mean, this is going to be a good defensive performance again for the Wildcats, who've been doing good defensively at home at least. To start the season. Damani McIntyre checks in. He'll probably guard Sky. Long pass to Dyson. Too much mustard on it to let oh, him. Oh, Harmon goes baseline. Wow. Hands to Hetty. And, and he's going to go to the line as he sits himself down against the boards. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great pass from Zion. And that's a part of his game. Yes, you see the great shooting, the up and under layups, the finishes in traffic. His facilitation is fantastic. He only has three assists, but how many of his passes have resulted in, in fouls or in good looks off yeah. extra second passes as well? Yeah, if there was a pass to assist that, I think he'd be a front runner in, the, in college in general, not just here on the Wildcats team as he looks to make it a uh, yeah. two for two trip. But another guy who I think it doesn't get credit for doing that is Henderson. If you've been watching him, especially when he's down in the paint, he facilitates the ball really well for a big guy. Zion leads this team in assists now to 28 on the season. Leader in assists for Incarnate Word is Davis. He came into the game with 24. He's got three on the night equal to Zion. This time Davis pulls up from the elbow, leaves it short. Harmon skies for the rebound. Yep. Wildcats in transition again. Hetty from the corner. Oh. Oh. And then heat check doesn't go his way yeah. there in the corner. DJ almost grabbed the board. 
Davis. Tough that's shot. It. Oh, oh, that's a nice move, but he misses the lay. I know he wants that one back. Dyson wants to go all the way, and yeah, he'll be fouled off the glass. And uh, <laughs> Reggie Theus jumped up from his seat. He's yelling about something. I think if I was Reggie, I would want a lot of this fast break stuff to slow down. I yeah. think you're you're getting in your own head a little bit, getting ahead of the play too much. Uh, slow down, run your offense. Yeah. But it's been working in Cookman's favor. A lot of fouls on these fast break opportunities going their way. 15 fouls on Incarnate Word as a team. Hammonds is four, and that's their thir uh, tied third leading scorer on that team. And Davis, their best assister, has three. It yeah. is still in the game, so wouldn't be surprised if the Wildcats try to go at him defensively and try to get him out. So it's very interesting to see here as uh, Dyson looks to make it a, I think, a two-for-two two trip here. Yep. And Cookman looks to pull away. Nine-point lead. I think it's one of the biggest of the night, if not the biggest of the night. Uh, it is their biggest lead of the night. Nine yeah. points. They had an eight-point lead at 50-42. to 42. Wicks. Really good job defensively yeah. to force a jump ball, and that's, that's Deshaun Dyson. Yeah. And, uh, uh, was that Dyson on him? It was. That looked like a, uh, a McIntyre defensive position, but yeah. Dyson really shut it down. Yeah. Very surprised that wasn't a traveling call, but I guess he uh, was fighting for possession during that uh, little Euro step move he was trying to make. And Catch that and is shoot. A not a good shot. That, it's a good look if he had more space, but he was obviously completely off of his you know normal shooting mechanics. Dyson, step back and drives through for the layup. Somebody who was not off of their normal shooting mechanics there was the shot. Uh, was Dyson there? Just I. It, yeah. Well, when you get the big man Robinson switched on to you, it's kind of easy to get him to commit to a shot fake. Morgan, tough finish inside, tries to tip his own miss up. Hall, uh, Carter Hollinger grabs the miss. Dyson, no look pass to Hetty. Thought Hetty was going to pull up again. Skip to the corner. Oh. Zion oh. drives baseline on the big man. Oh! And one. I, I was <laughs> I didn't believe in that one, but hey, get those points where we can. I think that's a UIW timeout. Uh, no, no, it's no, just a, just a double substitution. Just a double, double substitution. At first, I thought it was going to be a little stoppage of play. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if a timeout was called soon, though. This run that Cookman's been going on an 8-0 run, 10-1 uh, run in the last two minutes, but an 8-0 run in the last minute 29 has really pulled this game away for Bethune-Cookman. A uh, game that I, I think a lot of people were expecting to be much closer heading into 10, uh, well, almost I, 10 minutes. I think you can't count their chickens before they hatch yeah. because this UIW team can score with the best of them. 104 against D2 Shriner, but over 100 points against Arkansas Pine Bluff as Davis is going to go to the line for an and one. Foul is going to be on Damani, and that'll be his second foul. That breaks the 9-0 Bethune-Cookman run. So I don't think any lead is safe against the, an offense that averages almost 80 points a game. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement. But, I mean, I personally, a lot of I know a lot of people thought it would, might have been a closer game heading into that, like, 10-minute fourth quarter, if you will, of the uh, half. But, obviously, can't count your chickens before you hatch, as you said. So if you're a Wildcat fan, hang on to your seat for a little bit. Things might get a little closer than you'd want. Dyson, open lane. Oh. He goes down, no foul. He missed the layup. Morgan in transition, throws it to Glover for the easy lay-in. And now maybe it's Bethune-Cookman who may think about a timeout. Quick 5-0 run for the Cardinals. As Theus looks to slow the play down, tells Zion, hey, chill out. Puts his hand out, slows the play down. Harmon oh fakes the step back three, gets by Glover, wow. and gets fouled. Zion he just is, Harmon. he's so crafty. He reads defenses like a quarterback and can get that defender in one-on-one -on -one coverage to basically do whatever he wants. That jab step is beautiful, his shot fake is beautiful, and then when he drives, he forces the double team underneath. Uh, you just, you just gotta, it's one of those guys where you watch and you're like, this is, 
if you don't like how he plays, you just don't like basketball. Simple <laughs> as. He's one of those crafty, kind of undersized guys. He's not going to overpower you with his height. Pretty fast, but he's not, you know, the fastest guy you've ever seen. He's just really good at what he does, getting those open looks, working around defenses, and really showing up and showing off. Come be a part of BCU Athletics and support the Cat Eye Network. If you or your business is interested in partnering with us here on the Cat Eye Network, you can reach out to the Wildcat Athletic Communications Department at BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. That's BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. Cat Eye Network, we're producing every home game and we're going radio for road games for some basketball and baseball this year. And there's a lot of opportunities here at the Cat Eye Network. Come join us and be a part of Wildcat Nation. 55-64, Wildcats with their second largest lead of the night. They didn't push it to 14 before the quick 5-0 run before the media timeout by UIW. Morgan is somebody we haven't really talked about, but he is the scoring leader for UIW right now. 15 points, but only three of 10 from the floor, seven of seven from the free throw line. He's been doing it from the charity stripe, the Canadian from Brampton, Ontario. He's played his entire college career at UIW all four years. Averaged 8.8 points over those four years. His season high was 16 against UTSA. So he is one point away from tying and two points away from breaking that season high with 11.25 to go in the contest. Yeah, his career high was 28 points uh, back in 2021 as a sophomore. But obviously, you if you're a UIW uh, head, Cardinal head, whatever, they, I'm not 100% sure what your <laughs> fan base is called. No offense. But three out of ten shooting, you want him to get that percentage up as Zion Harmon makes it two for two from the oh. line, smiling as he puts that second one in, making it he's 29 on, points. Morgan is only 40% from the floor on the season, but he's 40% from three, which is the best three-point shooting average on this team. Two for six right now. And I'm not good enough at math. I'm not going to attempt to put a number out there, but I think it would be in the 30s, low 40s. Yeah. Here is Morgan right now, guarded by Zion Harmon. He blows by Zion. He makes the nice backdoor cutting pass to Heyman, who's fouled, and he'll go to the line. And that's McIntyre who fouls him. So that's Damani's third. So we've got Ward and Holsway with four, Dyson with three, and now McIntyre with three as the personal foul trouble continues for the Wildcats. Yeah. Uh, foul trouble for uh, a lot of play, a lot of key players on this team. Dyson with three, Houseway with four, Ward Jr. with four, and I think that may uh, might have been third for a. Uh, it is third for McIntyre. McIntyre. Yeah. So that's the last thing you want to see, really, is when you're all your key guys kind of outside of Zion are in foul trouble or close to it at least. Which, in a way, when you play this man hard pressing defense you don't want to be in because you can't play how you want to play anymore. Yeah. Um, UIW remains excellent from the free throw line. 18 of 21, the Wildcats almost cough up the ball, but DJ stays on it. Zion not even understanding how he lost the ball that way. He looked surprised when the ball came out. They throw it down to DJ, almost gets stripped, tries to rip it through. Extra pass to Sean Dyson, Euro step, floater too strong. And the rebound does weird things, and it's going to be a jump ball possession arrow Wildcats. There've been a lot of jump balls tonight. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of tough uh, defense and offense being played this game. And if you're a Wildcat fan, you're probably looking at this possession like, okay, let's keep this ball maybe a little bit more. Let's take some more time off this clock while we're up and give us less time to stress later as the Monty McIntyre picks it up from the half court behind yeah. the logo. Good inbounds defense by UIW. They're forcing the Wildcats to just throw it all the way out. Dyson, who's been the lead ball handler, wow. throws it too high for DJ Carter Hollinger. DJ listed at only 6'6", maybe a little bit taller than that. Oh. But I, it caught him, I think, before he fully could look up while he's still turning, so he couldn't get up there to get that ball. Tough screen there from uh, Glover on McIntyre. As Dyson, Dyson shuts in the down Wicks there. Or Wicks. Three-pointer no good. The rebound pinballs around and comes down to a gold jersey. Petty in the front court. Zion underneath. Excuse oh. me, that's McIntyre. Pushes it to Dyson who gets stripped by Davis. Good pass, but just 
Morgan in transition, loses the ball. Off Wildcat the ball. Wow. A lot of sloppy play in the last minute or two for yeah. both teams. No one really taking advantage of uh, their opportunities here. But, I mean, in this case, it's working for Cookman. Uh, you're up. You don't need to score. If no one else scores, you win. Well, so. that's obviously not how you're going to win the game if you're Bethu Cookman. You've got to continue to execute on the offensive yeah. end. But I think the reason is the pace of play has been so high. Neither team is really using the shot clock to its fullest extent and really breaking down offensive possessions and trying to make those Mitch matches on defense happen. It's all been quick transition offense for both teams. Yeah. And currently it's Eddie. working. Turnaround jumper, and finally the duck is broken for Jacoby Hetty, who was O of his last seven. Yeah. That's a, tough, a good shot for Hetty. That's some, this is bread and butter, really, that little fadeaway mid range jumper. And then it works in uh, Cookman's favor as they continue to work fast. That possession was only really three, four seconds long before it got to Hetty, and he put it up. Davis looking for the pick and roll. It's not there. Wicks on the outside. Steps back. For the three. No yeah. good, and the long rebound finds Himani McIntyre. Wicks has not been that guy for them right tonight. Yep. Um, <laughs> Watch for the horns play here, and Coach Theus tells Zion to slow down. He does take the double screen, kick to Dyson in the corner. Missed it. And the rebound comes down to a falling Sky Wicks, and he rolls oh. it bowling style to Davis. That may be the strangest pass he completes today and then wow. a corner three is good for Josiah Hammonds as it's back to an eight point game. A tough shot for Josiah but Josiah rather but uh, that was an interesting play out of Wicks. He's on the floor trying to get the ball out. Almost goes out of bounds on him trying to get it to Davis to really uh, facilitate the play and it Carmen works out. Skips by one, oh. by two contact, no foul but it's out of bounds off of Glover and Zion is down on the floor. He's going to be picked up by his teammates. 31 points in 30 minutes. And I know that the hardwood floors are unforgiven. Take it for someone who wrestled for, uh, for during high school. Even on those mats, on those, you know, those gym floors, you get slammed hard enough, you're going to feel that gym floor. So I can only imagine how it is when you're six foot plus jumping up by the rim and coming down hard like that. But... I don't Zion think he cares. Step back deep. Almost makes that deep three, nope. but it's out odd and in for him. Catch and shoot, no good from the corner. Hammonds tried to repeat his performance from last possession. Di uh, Dyson downhill. Oh. oh, the rim is not kind, and Hetty gets fouled as he was trying to put that back. Yeah. A lot of fouls on these second chance points and fast break opportunities for the Wildcats. And that's something that's going to be, Neos is going to probably be proud of his team for that. You get those opportunities, you know, you're not guaranteed points necessarily, but getting fouled makes it way easier to score. We'll take immediate timeout and be right back. This is BCU Athletics on the Cat Eye Network. Wildcats up by 8, 7.45 to play. There is no BC without you. Show your support for Bethune-Cookman Athletics by joining the Wildcat Champions Club today. Help build a championship culture at Bethune-Cookman. You can do donate and join at cookman.scalefunder.com. That's cookman.scalefunder.com. 
Zion.com. During the break, I was digging into the archives. Last year, Zion Harmon against Southern scored 36 points. That is his career high. At that point, it was the most by a freshman across all of college basketball last season, and he had eight three-pointers in that contest. Today, not really the same kind of line. He's got 31 points, but only two threes. He's done all his work on the drive instead of on the shot. Yeah, a lot more, uh, you know, as you said, a lot more driving, a lot more shots inside of the arc, some tough floaters and layups and stuff. But those two threes were amazing shots to make there. And he's it's taken a couple. He's uh, two for six, as you said, six threes overall. So it's not like he isn't shooting them, just getting his points other ways. And those two threes by Zion are the only two three-pointers the Wildcats have today. Davis at the free throw line in traffic and lost the ball. Dyson, coast, two coast, and he missed the layup. Nice defense by Heyman. And now Morgan trying to go the other way. Hulsey back in the game, and McIntyre's gonna get his fourth foul. Interesting foul call there. Oh no, it's on Hulsey, and he's gone. Yeah, that's his fifth. I think you, I kind of looked from our angle. Once again, we're in the opposite corner to the, you know, the side that you're looking at right now. So from our angle, it kind of looked like Hammonds kind of bounced out. And then I, that's why we thought the foul was on McIntyre because he was the only other defender back there trailing. But obviously, I guess Jose caused that pressure into him or not. Well, hold on. He's, still, he's in still in the game even though... Yeah, now, now the hands go up from the scorer's table and he will have to exit. James Henderson gets set to check back in. And the referees, I think, are going to go to the monitors yeah, to I look at this. Double check it. Because, once again, from, our, from now, my angle. And so, look. okay, so the book, the, the scorer's book has the foul on Halsey. The live stats program has the foul on McIntyre. Yeah. So... Okay, okay, the live stats program just changed. The foul is the fifth on Jose. Yeah. Which means Jose will have to sit down after yes. having an interesting performance. Two points, just one of three from the floor, two rebounds, one assists, and not really the greatest night for Elijah Jose. Yeah, not at all. Those fouls really, early fouls will mess up anybody's night. You can't get into your rhythm because you're not on the court much. And if you foul again, all of a sudden, if you're, especially if you get two early fouls, now you're looking at three fouls, and then you get to four, and, not, and then it's just kind of a waiting game and hoping you don't get called for anything. Josiah Hammonds back at the line remains perfect from the line, four for four and 90% on the season. Eight point game, 70 62. Wildcats on top, looking to make it 4 0 at home early on in the season for the Maroon and Gold. Zion draws a double team across to Hetty. Hetty gets his defender in the air, drives, pulls up from the nail, and it just seems like the Wildcats have not gotten their last couple of shots to go. They're one of their last eight. Yeah. Ooh. Driving and falling over his sky, lost the ball. Zion in transition against Davis, goes straight at him and leaves the layup short. Both teams struggling. UIW, one of their last five. Cookman, one of their last eight. Yeah, this was yelling at Zion Harmon. And come on, come on. Obviously and Hetty turns the ball over. Opportunity. Will it be? Back to Back him. to Hetty. Oh! Hetty fouled as he went for the dunk. Chase down, foul there. And I, I think um, Coach Theus immediately stood up, and he wants that to be a hostile act or yeah. at, at a flagrant. Yeah. And I think they're going to look at it because Hetty was all alone yeah. and he crumpled like a sack of potatoes after getting hit yeah. by Sky Wicks on the chase back. Now, that's a good job by Wicks, right? Defensively, yeah. if I'm a coach, I'd want your, if, you, if your guy gives up the ball, go chase it down. Don't give him yeah. two free points. That's a tough, I mean, he tries to get up there, but he's already up in the air. He can't get, he doesn't have enough. Uh, speed to get back there before he can, you know, try to block it. So he does hit a hard foul. That's, I don't think that's a hostile act necessarily. If he was farther back, you could argue a transition take foul as he comes, as Sky comes out of the game. But I think that's just good hard-nosed basketball out of Sky. And they're not going to look at it for a potential flagrant. So Hetty at the line.
Hetty misses the second one. The Wildcats at the free throw line this half. Are that was their first miss of the half. They were 15 of 15, now 15 of 16. Davis pulls up from the nail and gets it. Wow. Tough shot from Davis. Usually that's what we see out of uh, Hetty, but Hetty's not been himself tonight and hasn't been making those as consistently as you want him to. Only two for nine, 0 for three from three. Harmon surveys. Nobody really open. He's got to use his dribble. Now goes to Hetty. Long pass, Willoughby. Willoughby drives. Floater. Yes, for Seneca. Up and in, off the rim, off the backboard, and in for uh, Willoughby. Man, keeping this game really out of a, out of a quick flip reach for UIW with a nine-point lead. And that's what you want. You, you want to... You, you, at this point, you are okay trading buckets. You just don't want nice block. Yeah. I believe that was uh, McIntyre with the yeah, block there. Ronnie McIntyre, defensive extraordinaire. Definitely a player that I'd be looking at for a SWAC all-defensive team. Nah. Willoughby thought about the three drives, floater, wow, foul yeah. from the behind. Yeah. And, and he put that shot up because he knew he got grabbed on the shoulder. Yeah, uh, that was, I mean... I was going to say a late call, but I think due to how he got held, Seneca knew that he was going to get that call, so he just kind of put it up there to get the shooting foul. But tough shot from Willoughby. Good good look, but, you know, UIW also seems to have a problem with fouls. They have 20. Cookman only has 19. Four yeah. for Hammonds, four for Glover, three for Davis, three for Silva, and then ones and twos all around. Well, and, and I think if you're Bethune Cookman's coaching staff, you've got to look at those numbers and you've got to see that both Hammonds and Glover, especially Hammonds, who's been hammering you tonight at the free throw line, drive at them and get them out of there. That's what they did the second that Halsway was back in the game. They, they went at him and made him foul. That's something that they, I, you would look for Cookman to do, especially if they don't want if this game gets down into a free throw po position. You'd want that guy who's at, you know, all perfect from the line. Uh, Morgan, who only has one foul, but and get the, Hammonds out of here. Who's the, three for three for six from three. Oh, the uh, f shot clock did not reset, no. so we're gonna have a quick stoppage of play here. I wondered if there was a foul off the ball somewhere. Mm. There was not. Shot clock just doesn't reset. Sometimes, you know. When you, have, you, you don't have the robots on the clocks and stuff, sometimes stuff will start a little late, only a little bit of human error, oh. but nothing really happened yet, so it's no harm, really no foul. Wildcats only shooting 37.5% from the floor in the second half. It's not what you really want to see. Here's a drive and a foul as Morgan goes to the basket, and he's gonna go to the line again. Willoughby Morgan, that, seven of seven from the free throw line. And yeah, but um, the Wildcats just 35.7 or 37.5% from the field in this half, but 94% from the line, 17 of 18. Yep. Flipping it from the first half where they had, we were 54 uh, from the line, six of 11, more times at the line, more times making the shots, but can't make any threes. Two for nine in the first half, 0 for seven in the second half. That's something that they'll look to hopefully shore up during this game and shore up for the rest of the season. You don't, you don't want to be, it's good to be winning games without the three ball, but it'd certainly be a much bigger lead in a much different game if they were hitting them consistently. Morgan still perfect, lead back to nine, and BCU takes a time out with five minutes to go in the game. A nine point Wildcats lead. Basketball season is in full swing. Come catch a Wildcats Saturday, December 9th for non-conference action as the women's team tries to continue their hot start to the season against Warner University at 2 p.m. Admission is free. Can't make it. Catch all the action live on youtube.com slash cat eye network. Henson, nine point lead, five minutes left. If you're in the huddle right now, if you're Coach Theus, what are you saying to the guys to try and get them to close this game out over the Final Five? I'd be saying something like, look, guys, first of all, we need to start making threes if we're going to be taking them, right? We're shooting horrifically from beyond the arc. We're 12% from, uh, from three. We need to shore that up. We need to stop giving away dumb fouls. Almost everybody's in. A lot of our major players are in foul trouble. We already have three on Dyson, three on McIntyre, four on Ward, 
Parman thankfully only has one. So if we're looking to get into this a free throw kind of game towards the end, you don't want all of your main players already in foul trouble. It's yeah. the last thing you want. Elijah Hulsey already fouled out of this game. Has five fouls and only 12 minutes of action for Elijah. And uh, I, I think the Wildcats, I think, if I was the coach, I'm saying the three's not falling, but you have 13 second chance points and 34 points in the paint. Work the ball down low, get the ball to the rim, make them foul you. Yeah, work that ball, you know, work that ball inside in the post. Make them, as you said, make them foul you. You already have three players on that UIW team with four fouls. Obvi and another one on three. Obviously, take advantage of that. They're not going to want to foul you here. They don't want to get a, you know, have to sit out the rest of the game. So push them down while they're in there. Force them to rotate. Force them to do something else. First time we've seen some full court press action from Incarnate Word. They trap DJ on the baseline, somehow gets it to Willoughby and into the front court it goes and Deshaun Dyson oh, off the glass. He pretty. loves that high off the glass bank shot. That's a pretty shot, getting it over Robinson. He says 6'9", looks more like to be a 6'10", 6'11", kind of guy. But Three pointer from the wing, but it'll be three free throws for Madison. Josiah Hammonds. Man, oh man. That's, that's, the, that's, that's some, that, well that's a way to take the wind out of your sails yeah. if you're the Wildcats. That's a sting right there. You have him contested on that shot and I think he just hits him uh, with his leg when he goes in there to try to block it and it just doesn't work out for him. Yeah, well remember if, if, if your opponent is taking a jump shot, you have to give them area to land under yeah. where they originally took off from. Uh, if you don't clear their landing zone, that's a foul. And I think that's what happened to the Wildcats yeah. right there. And that's Damani McIntyre's fourth personal foul. So McIntyre has four, Reggie Ward has four. Ward hasn't played but six minutes tonight, so don't expect to see him on the floor too much unless they need an extra body. Morgan continues to be perfect from, excuse me, Hammonds continues to be perfect from the line. Morgan is also perfect from the line, nine of nine. Jeez. Hammonds now seven Six, of seven. Yeah, seven of seven. We do not want this to be a free throw shooting game. If you're the is, you do not want this to go down to who has better free throw shooters because they have oh, been. I thought that one was gonna. Yeah, I was trying. Fall but, out. <laughs> <laughs> but they have been electric throughout this game. Now, obviously, clutch situations are slightly different, but... Nice press break from the Wildcats. Dyson floats it oh. up. Oh, he tried to get the alley-oop to Hetty. The ball caroms off a foot underneath, and the Cardinals control it. And that's a that's a questionable decision yeah. there for that's a, Sean Dyson. That's a really well-played defensive possession. I think you remember that last possession he came down. Wildcats, they try to get to Hetty. This time they do from Zion. And that came off of a good defensive play at the other end from DJ Carter Hollinger. Yeah. But there, I, you get that fast break. They got it like three times in a row. Uh, 12 Robinsons down there, and he has to pick a person and plays that well that first time, stopping the alley oop. But can't do it uh, both times there. Can't get back fast enough. Ford kicked out. Heyman a three. Ah. Swish. And. UIW continues to drain them from downtown. They're eight three of the night, eight of 23. Eight of 23 compared to Cookman's two for 16. Not well, a good three point shooting night for the Cats. Well, the Wildcats attempted 43s in the game against Trinity College. And right at the end of the shot clock, Harmon puts it up and gets fouled by Hammonds. And that's it. Five fouls for Josiah Hammonds. He's done. Yeah, he's got to go sit down, think about what he's been doing tonight. A, de a decent performance out of him. Seven for seven for the line. So one of their better free throw shooters is off the court. And one of their better three, their best, I think, three-point shooter percentage-wise also off the court. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because this is the last media time at the under four. And Coach Theus went to his players right out of the timeout and I could read his lips from all the way up here. He said, stop trying to show off. <laughs> it's nice to watch, but I mean, it's one of those things that gets you irritated, especially when it's not working as a coach. 
is watching players on your team, and even as a as a when you were if you were a player for any sport, watching your teammates try to show off and then mess up was one of the most annoying things yeah. to have to deal with because you knew you're gonna feel in a practice tomorrow. So it's all it's, if you're gonna show off, you better make sure it works or it's in a situation where it completely warrants it. And also. This Incarnate Word team is not going away. This is not Trinity College. This is not Trinity Baptist. They've shot eight, they've hit eight threes. They're 34% from beyond the arc. They could get back into this game in a hurry if the Wildcats don't shape it up offensively. Yeah. And they haven't been sharp offensively out, outside of the paint. It's very interesting for a team that likes to shoot as many threes as they do to see how they are when the three isn't falling. Two, you know, once again, two for 16. The only person who's made two threes is Harmon, and those were both shots that you're probably not expecting him to make. So it's very interesting to see Hetty uh, is 0 for 3. Dice is 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. 5 for 17 inside. He does have 15 points, but he is shooting at a not amazing pace. Yeah, and I, you, you, this has gone on long enough to where you know that the weakness of this UIW team is defending the paint off of drive and kicks. So continue to do that. Eventually, someone's going to draw a double team and there's going to be a backdoor cut open. That's where the Wildcats have done the damage offensively tonight outside of Zion's heroics. And I, and I think part of the reason they're not doing the drive and kick is that they haven't been consistent from beyond the arc, which is causing them to go, okay, we're gonna have to, you know, try to make it the other way, and and if you're watching defensively, you know you're not. They're not making these threes consistently. At a certain point, it becomes well, let's force them to make that shot, and they haven't been. Well, I think my point was don't shoot, drive, kick, drive, kick until somebody on the defense makes a mistake and there's somebody open for an easy bucket. That yeah. Zion at the line hit his first one. And, and his second. second, and the Wildcats are up to 81 points. Their season average is 76.1. They were held to 65, 64, and 48 at the Longwood Invitational up in Virginia last week. So good to see the scoring form return. Wow. But look out, here comes Incarnate Word. Josh Morgan drains a three, and it's a six-point game. The full court press comes again. Uh, McIntyre. Got to get in the front court. Three seconds, and they do. Dyson goes past Robinson oh. and lays it up into the cup. Nice drive by Deshaun. That's intelligent basketball. That's just a, a pretty shot. Finger roll. You're at the basket. No one's around you. You got to make that, and he does. Eight-point game. A quick give and go there. Ford inside, and a nice scoop and score by Josiah Hammonds. Timeout. Incarnate Word. And Theus is pointing at DJ Carter Hollinger from the bench. He was in the paint, bottom, bottom under the cup. And I just see Theus' finger go all the way across this uh, stadium to get him back into, back into this huddle here. So I think if you're the Wildcats, it's a two possession game right now. Six points. You, you've got to take as much time off the clock on your offensive possessions as possible. Yes, that nice little uh, rim run baseline from uh, Deshaun Dyson was good, but it only took about seven seconds off the clock. You cannot give Incarnate Word as many chances as they have been getting. Yeah, you can't, you can't just let them do what they want offensively, and you know they want to shoot threes. They, you know this at this point. They've been shooting threes all night. They came in shooting threes. They're going to leave shooting threes. They're going to go home shooting threes on the bus back. So you got to you got to start stopping them from doing that. Try to close yeah. down faster, which they've done a good job of. They're not at 24, which is 37%. With such a high volume, obviously, it well, seems. That's still over uh, their season average of 33.9% yeah. from three. Wildcats, they're going to bring down their season three-point average by a lot. They're Shoot 30% before tonight, only 12%. Yeah. Wildcats. Is that a foul on UIW? The Cardinals bench jumped up. And I it think is. Is that the end of Heyman's night here? Or uh, does he only have one foul? I no, it's not the end foul. of Heyman's night. And they're going to review it. Yeah, they really, I don't think they like that call much, so now they're going to check it out. 
I've, excuse me for saying Heyman's end of this night on the, on our live stats. He is stacked around four personal fouls yeah. with Hammond's, so, Glover, yeah, and Hammond's Davis. Glover and Davis all have four. And then right in the middle, Heyman has one Davis. or now two. But uh, no, actually, that's his first. Yeah, that would be his first apologies. if that counts. But yeah. uh, if this review uh, stands, it'll be his first foul. Yeah. If it Wildcats, doesn't, he, just keeping an eye on the steals, right? Remember, uh, leading all of Division One in steals per game, 14.3. 16 steals for the Wildcats. Yep. Six for McIntyre, three for Hetty, two each for Harmon and Dyson, and one for DJ Willoughby and Henderson. Yeah. And McIntyre hasn't really gotten many steals since the start of the second half. Well, oh, yeah, I'm no, he mistaken. had six in the first half and none in the second because he hasn't really played. He picked up two quick fouls and he's on four, so hasn't gotten a lot of minutes here in this second half. And uh, once again, I want to bring up that points in the paint number. Bethune Cookman, half of their points in the paint, 40, but only 20 for UIW. And yet we've gone away from what has been the best offense we've had so far in this game. I think it's when you don't have a working three ball in the mo in modern basketball and you don't have a shack like presence in the paint, it gets hard to consistently score in the paint because they know that's where you're going to try to score. They're going to play around the paint. They're going to make sure defensively that they are in a situation where it is hard for you to make shots in the paint consistently, which is what UIW has started doing, which is why it's important for Cookman to get these team, you know, personal fouls. You have all these guys on four fouls. Work the ball inside. Try to get them a foul. Try to get them to do something. And especially when you're shooting so well in the line, they're shooting 95% going into this free throw. Uh, these free throw attempts for DJ as that uh, earlier review stands. And just keep going to the line. You're shooting well from there. They yeah. are indeed. Carter Hollinger, two from two again. Wildcats in the second half, 21 of 22 from the charity strike. Ford drives baseline all the way around. He stepped on the baseline. Wildcat ball. That's what defensive pressure does to you. Sometimes you're just trying to get around the guy and you don't notice that your foot's touching that baseline. I know it looks big on screen or big on your computer or iPhone, but the courts will feel real small when you're getting de uh, pressured defensively well. As this full oh, court press they... works defensively. Oh! oh look! Oh. DJ with a rejection oh, against Hyman. Oh, goodness. On the other end, it's Dyson at the nail. Kick out to Hollinger, and the Wildcats will drain more time off the clock. That's what how, a defensive possession from DJ. That's how you make up for a mistake. They couldn't get the ball out of that press, and he says, I'll get it back anyway. It's okay. DJ tripped up. Kind of Catch and shoot for three. Oh. It's Damani McIntyre. McIntyre says, I can make threes too. I promise. I swear I haven't lost it. And he he doesn't have a point there. tonight, and then he drains a massive triple. And he pushes off there. That, and uh, then there's a foul on the inside. I, at first, I thought it was going to be an offensive foul on 11 because he kind of looked like he pushed off from this angle. Once again, we're in that left-hand corner, so we're, I'm not 100% sure how it would look to the refs there on the court. But the... Uh, <laughs> Damani McIntyre makes that three after we talked about him having, you know, shooting problems after the opening couple of weeks to start the, you know, to start the season. But obviously, that was a great defensive possession from DJ. And something that uh, eagle-eyed viewers will notice was DJ kind of sets like a little second screen after the original give and go past them when he puts his like foot out trying to get his balance. He kind of slows down number five. Heyman trying to rotate back to Damani and makes him just stop at him. Oh, and they turn it over on the full court press again. McIntyre can't catch the pass cleanly. And then a foul is called against Carter Hollinger. And they will send Incarnate Word back to the line where they are 90% tonight, 27 of 30. And shooting is gonna be Morgan who is nine of nine. Almost half of his 20 points from the free throw line. 92% in the first half, 88% in the second half from the free throw line. This Incarnate Word team can do one thing consistently no matter what, and it seems it's to get free throws. DJ's putting his case to the ref, but obviously that foul's still gonna count. Yeah, well, <laughs> think about this. Their season average for three throw, free throw percentage, excuse me, 
is 71, and it's missed. Ah. The first miss of the game for Morgan. It yeah. remains a nine point game. And a call back to what I was talking about earlier, clutch time is a little bit different than with you know 18 minutes in the second half. When more gym starts rocking, it's hard to hear in here. But he, he makes got the second one. Yeah, student section all over this UIW team. The Wildcats have been unable to break this press. And they're going to call a foul against Incarnate Word. They're going to call it against TJ Ford. Remember the son of the former Naismith Player of the Year and eight-year NBA veteran TJ Ford Sr. And I want to sneak in a little, little fun fact. David Robinson, yes, that David Robinson, San Antonio Spurs legend. The Admiral got a master's degree from Incarnate Word. I was doing a little bit of research and it said famous graduates and it said David Robinson and it said basketball. And I was like, I don't think he played there, but he did get a master's after he graduated down, down there in San Antonio. I did not play for Incarnate Word. No, but, uh, whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's still interesting. It's still very interesting to see that kind of And of course, UIW stuff. in San Antonio, yeah. our producer from San Antonio. So... <laughs> Lots of San Antonio connections tonight. DJ Money from the line again. Two a two again. Ten point game. 141 left. Oh. Is that an offensive that foul? That is. It is. No, it's not. Oh, but and DJ seems to be hurt. It is an offensive oh. foul. Yeah. I, I, I was watching Reggie and he, he put his hands up like, what are, you, what are you calling? But it is an offensive foul. It's not a shooting foul, even though they're in the bonus because it's offensive. I yeah. think the Wildcats, I think the Wildcats think they're not, they're gonna shoot because yeah. they're in the bonus. But no, no, it's an offensive foul. Yeah. Now, interesting note for UIW, Sky Wicks just 11 points on three of eight shooting tonight. He averages close to 21 points as VCU timeout calls a timeout. Morgan has picked up the slack. He's got 21, and he usually averages just nine and a half per game. Yeah. The thing with this UIW team, and this might be the story of their season, we're not gonna you know, watch any more games, hypothetically, of this Cardinals team here in the Cat Eye Network. But if you're a UIW fan, please check in and make sure you need Wicks to be scoring. The most, in most of your games that you played this season, Wicks was your leading scorer. In, most, in all of the games you won, except for I think one, he was the leading scorer. And even in that game, he was your second leading scorer. You need Wicks to be firing on all cylinders if this team wants to consistently win. But back to Bethune, Cookman. 10 point lead, drawn, pulling away a little bit more with a minute 30 left. Now obviously this UIW team can hit threes, can shoot threes, but in this bonus area possible situation that's coming soon, you're losing your best three point shooters if you start having a foul, unless you put out players that don't have a lot of fouls. We're looking at Robinson, we're looking at TJ Ford, who has three, however. Wicks, who has two, but that's one of your best scores. It's a very interesting position that that coaching staff finds themselves in at UIW. Now, the Wildcats are gonna get an inbound at the table after the offensive foul. It was a ch uh, charge called against TJ Ford Jr., yeah. which was his third. Now, I think it is important for the Wildcats to use all 25 seconds of the shot clock. Yes, I think I wouldn't even mind them just getting a shot clock violation holding this ball, because that leaves them with just a minute and a little change. But I don't think Deshaun Dyson cares. Nope. But he'll score. He anyway. scores anyway. Dyson has come alive in the last couple of minutes. He's up to 19 points. Yep. We were on career night watch for Zion Harmon, but this will be a season high. Floater it's short. Floater just didn't have enough air under it. 12 point lead, 92-80. Wildcats working across the time strike. And now they're 109 to go. Look to work the ball a little bit slower. Dyson. Open to Hetty. A three. That's off. Yeah, well, it, it has not been his night. night. Nope. It has At not all. been Jacoby Hetty's night. And I think if you're Jacoby Hetty with 15 seconds left to go on the shot clock, you've got to know as UIW chucks up a three, it's no good. Under a minute to go. Will the Cardinals foul here? They might just let the game end. I think oh, they're, they're gonna start. try and force a backcourt violation. Oh. And they get the turnover as Harmon throws it away. Under the basket for an easy layup is Josiah Harmon's 35.1. Now it's back to a 10 point game, but Dyson is open on the other end. Takes a bump from the defender and scores. Yeah. 
as more gymnasium. This is the most points the Wildcats have scored against D1 opposition this season. Of course, they have the multiple 100-point games against the NCCAAs, Trinity College and Trinity Baptist. Let's just let more gymnasium sing you to sleep for a minute. It's a beautiful sound in here when more gymnasium gets going, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> some of the fans are leaving. They are, more gymnasium isn't stupid. They know this game is about over. And some people have work to do, school work, studying to do. They're probably getting texts from their friends. Where are you? Well, they were more gymnasium watching the Wildcats have a great performance against this UIW team, who's been electric from the line, but just couldn't consistently put it together defensively to stop this BCU team from dominating them for the most part in the paint. And as they sang na na na, goodbye to the Cardinals. There's still some time left in this clock, but unless you have a Ray Allen-esque performance with 26 seconds left, this game is about over. Wildcats in this, have hit seven of their last eight. And for a team that has shot Pretty well, actually, in this second half. 48%, they shot 47% in the first half, but they were shooting down near 20% from the field earlier in this second half to turn that around to get the points that they needed to hold off a late charge from UIW. Yeah. A, a, a good gutsy finish out here from the Wildcats. Yeah, UIW, I mean, the, word, the last thing that I think Theus would wanted was a free throw shooting end of game scenario as Whoop, hold on, the Wildcats Ooh, I think that almost, might be a it's a foul. They almost got the backcourt violation. Yeah. He tiptoes the time stripe, but stays in the front court. and the Wildcats will shoot with 15.9 to go. So I was mentioning the highest scoring game against a D1 opponent. Previously, it was 79 in the win against Charleston Southern. They scored 60 in a loss to Minnesota, then had a pretty poor week, to be perfectly honest in Virginia, the MTE hosted by Longwood. 65, 64, and 48 points in those three games, but uh, they have come back to more gymnasium and made a statement. They love playing at home, this Wildcats team. Both the women's and the men's teams, I think, are doing amazing at home. I think they're both undefeated. Both undefeated at currently home. Currently in more gymnasium, a fortress to start out the season, and they'll look to continue that in conference play. And you are Oh, it's a, it's it's steal. Steal. it's a steal. And he tells Bryce. He turned around and told Bryce at the table at he wants table. that Steal. Our uh, statistician and uh, assistant S the, uh, SID there, Bryce Arnowski. <laughs> That's it. Told. It's over. This one belongs to the maroon and gold. The Wildcats came into the game as underdogs. As the student, student section, section mocking the, floor. the uh, Cardinals defensive uh, little thing they do before uh, the slapping of the court as they leave the uh, more gymnasium here, sad with a 14 point loss, which I don't think is fair to UIW. I don't think no. that score really reflects how the game went for most of it. Well, I think in the second half, they really fell off. They yeah. shot 34% from the floor uh, and 28% from three in the second half, as opposed to 52% and 41 in the first half. And I guess that's credit to the Wildcat defense. Yeah. I mean, some of the things about this uh, UIW team that we saw going into the, se the second half, you put, a lot of, I, I was feeling that kind of, okay, are they going to be able to keep this up? You know, you're shooting this well. Everybody seems to be shooting amazing for the free throw line, which they kept doing, by the way, ending with an 88% free throw percentage. Wabathu Cookman brought theirs back up to a respectable 84% towards the end. Starting, I had an uh, awful first half, to be fair, 54 from the line. One thing that uh, Cookman's going to have to look to do, and I think they're going to be working on in practice, the women's team has to work on zone defense, and the men's team has to work on three-point shooting. You cannot expect to win games, especially those tougher conference games, when you're shooting 16% from three, three for 18, that's pitiful. And especially the SWAC is known for its forward play, for its centered play. Mm -hmm. They're big and tough inside. They're not gonna let you get 42 points in the paint like UIW let us get tonight. So you're gonna have to toughen up that outside yeah. shooting. Here are your final scoring totals. First for Incarnate Word, Morgan showed out 21 points, only four of 13 shooting, but three of those four field goals were from three, 10 of 11 from the free throw line. 
with four rebounds and a team high, four assists and two steals. Good night from Oregon. Hammonds had 20 points quietly in the second half. Um, five of 12 from the floor, three of six from three, and seven of seven from the free throw line. All in all, 29 of 33 from the charity stripe, 87.9% from Incarnate Wood. Wicks, their top scorer, he averages 20 a game, but he only got 11 tonight on three of eight shooting, and he did not have a point in half number two. Wildcats kept him quiet yeah. tonight. Hyman had eight, Robinson also had eight. Glover and Davis had six, Ford had two. Silva, Dennis, and Drummond played but did not score. And for Bethune Cookman, Zion Harmon, his second best shooting performance of his collegiate career, had 36 in a game last year against Southern University in Baton Rouge, a game that the Wildcats actually ultimately lost. Uh, they had 33 tonight, 12 of 18 shooting. He hit two of the Wildcats, three three-pointers, two of six from beyond the arc, seven of eight from the free throw line. A team high, eight assists for Zion as well and only missed two minutes of action, played 30 eight minutes. Deshaun Dyson, good night for him at 23. DJ Carter Hollinger, a season high, 15 points for him and Jacoby Henney responded well to get up to his average of 14 points even though he went 3 of 11 from the field and 0 for 4 from 3 but 8 out of 10 from the free throw line. Yep. This game was defined from the charity stripe yep. whether you were UIW or BCU. Yeah, as time went on, especially in that second half Cookman got their feet under them, so to speak, at the free throw line, making this game, uh, making the game, the lead that they had gained much bigger. 25 to 26, that is elite level free throw shooting, and that matched the elite level free throw shooting we were seeing out of UIW. As Bethune Cookman, a Zion Harmon legacy game right here. <laughs> 33 points against the boys, for, uh, the Cardinals from San Antonio. Yep. 96 82. Did a great job. We're looking at steals, obviously, when you're leading the nation in something and are, are around leading the nation in something. You want to keep checking back in on that stat. It makes you feel good and warm inside. Damani McIntyre gets seven more steals with that last one at the end of the game. Being counted by Bryce Lenowski, <laughs> our uh, SI, yeah. SID down there. Here's the rest of the scoring totals. Willoughby had six off the bench. Good night for Willoughby. He has also had two assists, a steal, and a rebound in only uh, nine minutes of action. McIntyre, of course, the seven steals. He also had three points. That one big three-point shot at the end of the game. That really kind of iced the game yeah. towards the end and made it a nine-point contest. Also a two points but five fouls in 12 minutes. Not a bad night for him. Reggie Ward did not score four fouls in six minutes, and Henderson also did not score, but he was mostly there for his defensive prowess. Did pick up a nice block there yep. towards the end of the game. But I really do want to shout out the play of DJ Carter Hollinger. Missed the start of the year with an injury, playing in his first home game of the season tonight. He balled out 15 points, but also three blocks on the defensive end and was forced to guard the big guys on the other side, Robinson yeah. and Heyman, and did yeah. a very good job. Henderson did a great job in that second half and in that first half. I do, once again, want to shout out his facilitating play. It's something that a lot of people won't see or recognize because it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. But just how he passed the ball for a big man, it's always so nice to see. You know, Jokic does it in the NBA. And I'm not saying he's Jokic level yet, but obviously he does a great job there. And defensively, he did a great job holding down, considering Holsway and Ward Jr. were in early foul trouble. To leave this game with one personal foul when all your other front court, you know, people in front of you on the depth chart, you'd argue, aren't playing that well defensively. They played, Hosea and Ward Jr. played 18 minutes combined. Henderson played eight, but those eight minutes were crucial for that uh, Wildcats win. Here are your team stats. Bethune-Cookman out, rebounded in Carnot Ward 37-34 and 11-7 on the offensive glass. Uh, 15 assists for Bethune-Cookman, 17 for UIW. In the second half, BCU kind of went to the iso ball pro style that we're used to seeing them play yeah. kind of got away from that passing momentum that they had in the first half uiw 24 turnovers and of course 17 of those were bcu steals bcu only turned the ball over 12 times they're averaging 12 turnovers a game so right on that, right number. On that number um Blocks, four for BCU, one for UIW. 28 points off the fast break for Bethune-Cookman. They were looking to push the pace of this game from the word go, and, and sometimes it got away from them. Yeah, the tempo 
being so fast led to a lot of opportunities, but at the same time, it led to a lot of sloppy play. There were moments, especially towards the end, the beginning of that second half, where that ball was just everywhere but the net for both teams. It was out of it was out of players' hands. Palming via you had a palming violation. You had reaching fouls. You had all these uh, legal screens. Everything in, under the sun except for scoring points. Which is part of the reason we see so many fouls. 26 personal fouls for Incarnate Word, 23 for Bethune Cookman. That's uh, 49 total personal fouls. That's a lot. Yeah. Let's run you through a couple of these last stats 17 steals for BCU, 7 for Incarnate Word, 24 points off of turnovers for Bethune Cookman, 15 for UIW. Here's the key stat. If you, if you listen to the Josh Pate foot, College Football Podcast, this is your paper pop stat. 42 points in the paint for BCU, just 22 for UIW. We talked at the top of the show, Henson, about how the Wildcats might struggle with the overall size of Incarnate Word. They handled it with aplomb and made it their win condition tonight. Yeah, they added, the funny thing about players with height and having the, especially like your centers and power forwards, your slower big guys, is that if you have someone like a Zion Harmon who can get in there and moves fast enough that they can't react in time, because think about, you know, these bigger bodies, they got to move. They have a lot more space to cover, ground to cover. So if you can get somebody like Zion Harmon who plays that iso ball, those give and goes, get open looks in the paint, no matter how big you are, if you're just not in position, you're not going to be able to stop it. Deshaun Dyson also likes to put that ball up real way high. So even if you're 7 foot, 6 foot 11, 6 foot 10, he can't get that hand, you can't get your hand up there to block that shot without causing a goaltending or something of that nature. So it worked out for Cookman's benefit. They played around the height deficit thing pretty well, considering especially they were missing whole sway for most of the game, only played 12 minutes their tallest player on the team who made everyone else look small in comparison only two points from two rebounds however that five those five fouls completely messed up his night that'll do it for us here for more gymnasium your final score bethune quickman 96 uiw 82 the wildcats move up to four and four and a perfect four and oh at home incarnate word falls to three and five and one and one on the road for Counter Network director Eugene Robinson who is also doubling as cameraman tonight. Thank you, Gino. Producer Darian McCaskill, LCIDs, Bryce Wynoski, and Brian Harvey. My analyst, Henson White. My name is Michael Torello. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.